Welcome everybody to the Hanacast, everybody. My name is Christian Hanna, and right now we have our friend Raphael That's joining me. us. That's me. It's been like a full month since our last episode of the Hanacast. Yeah, I've been kind of busy applying for school, but that's all done, so... Yeah. Rock and roll. All righty. Uh, man, but ever since then, you know, a lot of things, honestly, has been happening. Yeah. Uh, uh, and whatnot, in my life and whatnot, like, uh, for example, I've gotten around to see a few movies that came out. Uh, this year, like for example, I finally saw A Quiet Place Part Two. Oh, nice! What did you think about that? Honestly, this was significantly better than the first one. Although, to be fair, with the original, with the original Quiet Place, what kind of killed that movie for me was like just one simple issue, which like grand, like those because like there was a lot going for the movie, like you mm -hmm. know, great acting, uh, great use of sound, great cinematography, great tension. The one thing that just kind of killed it for me was the ungodly stupid decision, which, and it's not really a spoiler now, considering the sequel is mm -hmm. out in, like, and it's, that's part of the marketing. In the in the first film, they have another kid. Yeah, even then, I remember it, that. Yep. It, actually, even then, it wouldn't really be a spoiler, because, like, the, the original film kind of... It's, it's literally the whole plot. Yeah. It's How not, are we going to silently deliver this baby? Yeah, which is... It, which it's not even a case of like you know oh they already had this child and they have to and they have to deal with it that yeah, would have been interesting it, they, they, super because babies cry but uh, I mean you could you know suspend the disbelief if you don't make the audience think about it for the whole movie well, no no but no the problem is like if it was all if it was there to begin with that would have been fine because mm -hmm. what are they gonna do at that point but. They made a but conscious also it's like, choice. It's like possible that it was born before all the things showed up or whatever. Yeah, well, but except they, except when you look at, except in the film, they, it's pretty clear that that it was a conscious choice to yep, have this child to, in. Yep. This even world. even though the world is fucked, literally with, with, with monsters that can hear, that have unbelievable hearing, which again is a great concept. But it's just that one choice just baffles yeah, me. It makes so it makes it makes your main protagonist that everyone's supposed to like relate to and like look like absolute assholes and, and idiots. It's just mm -hmm. it's it's the dumbest. Like, again, it's not a terrible movie by any stretch, but it's like nah, it's but it's but it's it's, it's got a massive plot hole that just kind of ruins it. But so and so then you get to a quiet place part two. That stuff is already done and over with. Like that that choice was made in the first film. So let's see how this one holds up. Yeah. And really when you know when you oh. don't when you don't have a what? I wanted to say something. There's this really fire YouTube video out there. You remember the scene in a quiet place where they find the old man? Yeah. Yeah and then and then and then he, I think you showed so, me. I think so, you showed yeah, me. Yeah, I might have, but I want I want everyone else to know about it too. So, have you ever owned a PlayStation 2? Yeah. You know how they make that noise when you turn them on the yeah. So Horror. it replaces him him opening his mouth and screaming with the PlayStation 2 intro, but like bass boosted to absolute hell. It's great. Yeah. So like I said, the sequel didn't really have to deal mm -hmm. uh, with that choice because, again, that choice was made in the first film. So, yeah. And without that choice, ironically enough, the, the sequel, for, at least for me, became a lot better. Yeah. And there's some... Uh, like there's some great tension, great uh, ways of getting around certain situations, and uh, thing like overall, it's just a really, really strong sequel. You know what else is a super strong sequel to everything? What? ChristianHanna.com. Wow, man, that's a that's an unbelievably good segue. I know. Yeah, you can it go. It took to, me all night to think about it. Exactly. Like you can go to ChristianHanna.com. We have a bunch of links right here. You click on here. You get to my YouTube page. You click on the Patreon link. You get to go to my Patreon page where we have uh, a three dollar a month uh, tier. Which, granted, we are still trying. Like we really do uh, try come up like uh, try to think of some. Uh, some more Patreon exclusive stuff. Uh, currently, we don't have any Patreon supports, but hey, you could be uh, the first. Uh, so yeah, um, we also have a, a merch store where you can check out check out all of our merch. Uh, hold on, let me just. Um, can I sell somebody my firstborn through Patreon? Uh, you probably no. That's probably not legal. Uh. Uh, crap. Shoot. Uh, uh, well, there goes my idea. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ralph. You go have to. Uh, I uh, I, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but I'm gonna have to keep it. Uh, he, he doesn't actually have a firstborn. Not yet. Um, probably not ever. Actually. Yeah, I hate kids. Sorry, kids out there. Uh, but anyways, I um I don't have a problem with kids. I just think they're annoying and smell bad and are really loud and distract you from playing expensive. video games. Yeah, that too. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have shirts, we have stickers, we have Make America Cringe Again merch, we have uh, mugs, we have pillows, we have ass pants, we have socks, we have Pride merch. Where all of where even though it's not Pride Month, we're still supporting uh, Pride Pride it's Pride Life. Exactly. Uh, and all and all um, proceeds from. Uh, this merch will go to the Human Rights Campaign, which is the number one uh, LGBTQ uh, activist. Uh, you can say uh, they're pretty poggers. Yeah, they are. They are really poggers. Probably some of the most pog people out there. Um, we also I, this is on my Twitter link. You can get onto my letterbox, where you can uh, again, yeah, you click onto my letterbox and and uh, yeah, you click on yeah, you can click onto my letterbox and you'll see all like all my stuff that I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm always updating lists. I'm always updating, yeah, you know, like I, like I, I can make, basically, yeah, basically, it's just a cool video diary. Well, uh, you gave God's Not Dead five stars. Yeah. Oh, and what's wait, what's this? No, that was my phone. Oh, okay. Was telling me stuff about my blood sugar. Oh, okay. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, you've made your own as well. Yep, finally did it, but there's nothing on it because I literally just made it before we did this. I don't even have a profile picture. Yeah, yet. I'm gonna follow me. you right there, so you have your there first follower. So that's that's cool. me. Yeah, exactly. Well, you'll probably have a, you'll, you'll probably have a, um, uh, what is it? Um, uh, I'll, I'll send you a profile picture here in a oh, bit. Yeah, sick. Yeah, sick. all right. Yeah, I also have a TikTok subreddit. I haven't really done a whole lot in those in a while because, again, it's just, yeah, so many things, busy and whatnot. Um, I will say, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, so I saw A Quiet Place Part 2. It's great. So far, it's probably my number five movie of the year so far, okay, 2021. That's pretty, pretty good, then. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's real. It's great. Uh, again, I think right now my list is number five, A Quiet Place Part 2. Number four, Judas and the Black Messiah. Number three, The White Tiger, which you still got to see. Yeah. Uh, uh, number two, The Mitchells vs. the Machines. Have you seen that yet? No, not yet. You need to see The Mitchells vs. Yeah, the Machines. It's so me. good. Yeah. And number one for me is still In the Heights. In the Heights, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. In the Heights was super. Super good. Oh, I love it, I, man. I was just, uh, I can't, I can't, I, I literally can't get that movie out of my I'm not, hands. I'm not a massive, massive fan of musicals and stuff, but when they're done right, what can you even say? I, I, I am, I am a big, at least movie musical guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but regardless, like it's, it, it's, it's great. Um, and I'm trying to think of a lot of some other things I've been doing. Oh yeah, also, you know, uh, speaking of which, I maybe I actually. I uh, I think I have a couple of things I want to try to bring up. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, for one, I uh, like I, I I I started reminiscing about some things I had uh, at my in my childhood and whatnot. Mm. Um, and I was like, huh, you know, uh, I I I there's like. I, don't know, I was going through this big nostalgia trip and whatnot, and I saw some things online. I was like, "Oh my god, I remember that from when I was a kid. I gotta get these." Uh, and I, 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 I want to show them off on the podcast because I mean, I think they're pretty cool. The first one I have actually not been able to to use yet because it like, and you'll probably see why. It's this eyewitness game. Oh called yeah, Dino. yeah, yeah! I remember this little yeah, dude. Yeah, except this actually kind of kind of lit. Yeah, except this thing uh, requires. Like, except this thing doesn't work on Windows 10, and of I don't. Course. And I don't know how to actually get the. Uh, like, I don't know if there's a way to make this work on. A, yes, you. So. A, we, uh, yeah, yeah but, I can. I can show you how to do it. There is a way to. Yeah, I. I because I. Because I remember playing this as a kid. And I was like, I really want to try and do. Like, I want to actually try and like have this as like a gameplay. Yeah, honestly, the, the first thing you could do is just Google if there's like a compatibility patch. I've been, trying look, download. I've been trying to look. Uh, f- I've been trying to look. I've been trying to, you know, look for any of these, but like f- look for stuff like that. But it's like I'm kind of worried about like that re- that's the reason why I asked you is because you probably know way more about this. Yeah, than yeah, I yeah know, but I can I can get that running for you for sure. Yeah, because uh, I because like because th- basically this whole thing started like when I was like oh man I remember I remember you remember eyewitness yes you know, don't do 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 like I, I oh my god I love I I love the eyewitness team was like oh yeah I remember this like I think this was like an even though it doesn't say eyewitness I think like I don't. I, I'm wondering if this actually did have the eyewitness theme in it. I'm not exactly sure, but regardless, yeah, I, I, I do want to try to play this. And if we can find out a way to play play this on the um on the Windows 10, I, I, I'm I definitely going to try to... Um, yeah, uh, I can help do, you with that for sure. Yeah, and so hopefully we can try to do a gameplay series on that. Oh, and one thing I'm considering doing is uh, since... Uh, dr- appara- like even, I'm a little bit conflicted because on one hand, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is coming up, but at the same time, there is apparently a uh, 
a thing for Jurassic World Evolution 1 where there's, uh, like, sort of a... Uh, I don't know if it's like an extension. It's sort of like an extension where it's like called Return to Jurassic Park, and you can make. And it's basically like you can actually have everything be like Jurassic Park, and like they even brought back. I mean, yeah, in the game itself, they already have Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm, but in this new expansion that came out in 2019, I didn't even know this. They actually have Sam Neill and Laura Dern return oh, as Alan okay. Grant and uh, and Ellie. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like there's there is also. Um, what's his name? Uh, John Hammond, but obviously that's not really Richard Attenborough because he died in 2014. Yeah, he's been dead for a while now. Six but, years in it. But it's like I, seven. I, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I, I almost kind of want to get that considering, you know, I want to actually have a Jurassic Park, but at the same time, Jurassic World Evolution Two is literally coming up in a bit, and I'm wondering if they're going to have an extension like that. Yeah. Because uh, like. I'm personally more of a Jurassic Park guy than a Jurassic World guy. I, I kind of like to... Yeah, I, I like the first Jurassic World. I thought it was thought it was okay. I need to rewatch that because uh, there's some more stuff in that. Because like, there's some stuff in that movie that I'm starting to think like, it's like more and more stuff doesn't make sense. Like for example, one thing the one thing in that movie I'm just baffled over is like how did the higher ups at Jurassic World not know what this Indominus Rex was made out of? Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's yeah, that's actually probably what, that whole thing. In and of itself, is probably one of the biggest holes in the plot of the movie. It's like why would ever? You... It's it's it's, it's a contri- it's a contrivance, honestly. Yeah, like it's just it's just uh, again I, and and plus another thing I kind of I, I thought I was a little bit disappointed in Jurassic World was that like it felt a little bit too sci-fi heavy. Yeah, like the first Jurassic Park really the, was believable. Like really, the only thing that was really sci-fi in the movie was the technology clo- cloning the dinosaurs. Yeah, everything else they had jeeps, computers, real-world stuff, and it's just it's just the cloning dinosaurs ap- aspect that was the sci-fi stuff. And really, by the time you get to the Lost World and Jurassic Park three, like it's th- they're still sci-fi movies, but that technology isn't even in those movies. It's just mm-hmm. the dinosaurs running around. Yeah, and so I, I but. With this uh, Welcome to Jurassic Park thing in Jurassic World Evolution, I want to try that because it's like, you know, it has the Jeeps, mm-hmm. it has everything. That w- the whole aesthetic of Jurassic Park, yeah. Yeah. The one thing I'm wondering is like, uh, is like, because basically in, in this storyline, in this expansion, Ellie, Dr. Grant, and Ian are brought on to be like sort of supervisors of this new Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really sure if they would ever do that again. No, they would be like, close the- this. What are you talking about? Yeah, don't ever do this again. It's like, hell, it took Alan Grant a ton of money just to, in Jurassic Park 3, just to get back to the island. And it was, and, and he was, and even then he was duped into thinking it was Isla Nublar when it was really Isla Sorna. And yes, right. I do know that, I do know the islands and whatnot. It's, it's, yeah, but yeah, but I just want that Jurassic Park aesthetic. It's just mm-hmm. I just like that aesthetic. No, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Although it's like twenty, and that's although it's like twenty bucks. I'm wondering if I should drop that uh, when Jurassic World Evolution Two is just on the way. And again, I don't know if they're going to. I mean, they probably will have a. It might. It might go on sale when when Jurassic Evolution Two releases. Probably because I already have Jurassic World uh, Evolution because I got it for free on Epic Ep- on Epic Games, uh, which was really pog. Yeah, do you have Steam? Uh, I do have Steam, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't really use Steam all that much. Oh, well, they have more sales than Epic. They don't offer free games, which is kind of the only downside. But they do have much m- more frequent and, in my opinion, better sales. Oh, oh, uh, Steam has better. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Again, I might try that. I mean, they're they're bound to have maybe like a Black Friday sale or whatnot. Yeah, no, they they do a bunch of them. They have a summer sale, a winter sale. I mean, even even if it was Epic, like, because mm-hmm. again, again, I just I just really do want to try to have that. Jurassic Park feeling to it because and even apparently in that they actually do have the pteranodons and the in that expansion pack. Cool. Yeah, and I always thought that's pretty. I always thought that was pretty cool. A couple of other things I got um, were a couple of books that I had when I was a kid. Okay. One of them I hadn't seen in ten years. The other one I hadn't seen since I was less than ten, and uh, that is. Um, A couple, yeah, these a couple of, yeah, these books. One of them is National Geographic Dinosaurs, and the other one is National Geographic Mam- Prehistoric Mammals. This is the one I haven't had since I was, since like te- over t- around ten years ago, and this is the one I haven't seen since I was less than ten years old. So cool looking. Yeah, it's granted, the science in these had. is extremely outdated. Like I think, oh, yeah. I think this one came out like the early, like very early two thousands. This one came out in like two thousand three. Um, and one thing I will say is like when you look at the some of the. Di- uh, some of the di- actually, I'll, I'll probably uh, show you uh, some of the ones on here. Uh, uh, um, 
Oh, wait, wait, maybe maybe we should hold it up for the for the people to see and whatnot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. this is why. Like, this is some of the stuff I well, some of the stuff I really liked about this because like it has like a human size comparison and whatnot. Yeah, that's oh, cool. Although I will say with the dinosaur one, there's a few criticisms I have. It's okay, but yeah, take, here, yeah. a few criticisms I have is that uh, oh, Grant, I don't know if I can really criticize because like they didn't know any better about the science and whatnot, but like all the dinosaurs have like the exact same color palette, like the exact like just brown. None it's, of them have feathers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see what they with the with the Velociraptor. Oh like, lord. Yeah. Oh lord. No yeah. feathers. Are you um, telling me my chicken's grandpa doesn't have it? feathers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not. Again, again, I'm not, I'm not gonna hold this against this book because again, that's what they knew at the time. But it's like, it's, it's a pretty detailed. I like it. It I looks do, good. I, the art is, but it, the but, art it, is but it also good. just sort of looks like oh, they it's just, watched it's just Jurassic looking, Park and called it a day. <laughs> oh no, this isn't. This doesn't look like Jurassic Park. These di this Dinonychus looks like the ones from Jurassic. Because funny enough, like if you notice in Jurassic Park, there were like so there were a few things that actually like the the Velociraptors in those movies are actually more accurate to Dinonychus because not only from the size like the because like Velociraptor was so tiny you could curb yeah. stomp that thing. It's like you less could. than it's like the, less the real dangerous thing about it was there, well, the a if you found multiple velociraptors which sure. usually did i'm not even sure if multiple vel i don't even know it's the it's that claw that you got to worry about because it was pretty it i don't even big. know like velociraptor was it was less than two feet tall like i don't like i mean i'm pretty sure you still wouldn't want it biting you but it's just like you again you can also, you can bite me all at once but like if it tries to stick that claw in me i don't know it might do some damage i don't i don't know i think it probably would it's a bunch of them Maybe a bunch of them, but it's like I'd be more scared of Deinonychus because oh, yeah. that that's more accurate to the size of a one. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really part. glad we didn't have to live at the same time as like any of these things, honestly. Uh, yeah, hell, if anything, the dinosaurs going extinct was the reason why mammals were able to. Yeah, uh, yeah. And a, fu a funny thing, another funny thing about Jurassic Park is that they like when they're looking at the Velociraptor fossils in Montana. That's a or, I don't know if it was Montana or whatever. I think it was either that or, like, New Mexico or something. Something around that. But the funny thing is, again, Velociraptor didn't live in New Mexico or the United States. Nope. It lived in Mongolia. Yep. Whereas, again, Deinonychus, that was... Did. Yeah, so I think it was really just Deinonychus, but they didn't know it was Deinonychus or whatever. And this one, the prehistoric mammals, th um, this one I also really like because... I, I don't know, I, I kind of like prehistoric mammals more than dinosaurs in some ways because, like, they're really... We like... And some of them are like really weird. Like for example, this is like this what like this looks like a cat, but it was actually a marsupial. Right, do they have those big slots in there? Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, uh, those big slots are freaking awesome, dude. Dude, yeah, Megatherium. Yeah, didn't they used to dig like massive tunnels? No, they they used to live in caves. Caves, okay. Some of them, yeah, some of them lived in caves, but it's like, where where is it? Um, I know I know that I know they are in here. It's just gotta try to look. Yep, here we are. Oh, here's the funny thing about uh, things like Megatherium and these big ground sloths. Uh, new studies show that apparently they they might not have even had hair. Like, they huh. would have been hairless. I mean, obviously they would have had some hair, like an elephant mm, and whatnot. But yeah, it's like, yeah. but, but when I started thinking about it, I was like, yo, that actually does kind of make sense because, um, you know, why would something this big living in what was, you know, tropical... Uh, Climate, gra yeah. Yeah, why would it need all that fur? So it's like... Actually, yeah, I kind of get that, but Megatherium was like, I think it was like the size of an elephant. It's like, I, I think by the time it got to adult size, no predator would ever try to chop. Even with the, when the saber-toothed cats came down to South America, it would have, like, it would have probably not done been there. Also, I gotta say, um, there are some uh, little funny things here, like, uh, like there's, uh, like, ancient uh, human ancestors, like... Oh, like Australopith Java man and stuff, like yeah. like Australopithecus, which also apparently this is a female. I can tell because boobs. Um, there's, uh, there's what is it? Paranthropus, Paranthropus. Uh, you can tell this one's a female because it has boobs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, porn in there for you. Uh, oh God, no. There's the probably the funniest name in paleontology history, Homo erectus. Homo erectus, yeah, bro. <laughs> that's getting that's getting close. That's that's like us. I mean, it is it is one of the it is one of the earliest clear ancestors yeah. of humans. Like some of the others are more theorized. Although, Grant, this came out in two thousand three, so this might this is probably outdated. But, uh, the, you know, oh, there's us, and there's a, another woman, you can tell, because boobs, and boobs. technically this wouldn't be speciesist, because it's a human being. I, st I st uh, I'm not speciesist, like, it was still one, I guess it would, like, Grant, I don't know, why am I even talking about this? It doesn't like, matter, it's not relevant. <laughs> it's not relevant, what? <laughs> but yeah, it's, although, there are some things, oh, like, like, this. You know, some of us still have, um, 
caveman genes? We we still have some people still have Neanderthal yeah. DNA. I would not be surprised if I was one of those people. Oh, actually, did I ever tell you this? Hmm. That uh, like uh, white people are more likely to have Neanderthal DNA than uh, than any other race, huh. which means. My dad was wrong. White people are less human than other races. Oh, shit. If you don't know, my dad was extremely racist and claimed black people w- were more related to gorillas than people. That's that's him. I don't condone anything he said. Yeah, I gotta say, that sounds a little wrong. He, oh, wrong is an understatement. It was immoral. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, but the, that's the funny thing. Scientifically. Yeah, it was actually the other way around. Yeah. Holy so, shit. yeah, exactly. I'm less human than you. It's, it's all right, bro. You'll evolve. It's, You'll catch up. You'll and, catch up. Uh, well, with uh, the Trump party, we're pro- well, with, with Trump supporters, we're probably never going to evolve. We're it's probably all right. just, just going to probably de-evolve. Some other creatures I really love in here, like I've like I've ever since I saw Walking of Beasts, I always loved Dinotherium. I oh thought, yeah, those were the ones with like the the bottom, the, like the tusks. Bo- yeah, yeah, bottom the tusks. tusks. Those those things were cool. And even, th- but even with this, like even with this, like some of the information is a little bit outdated. Like for example, this says elephant. The genus says elephant, and the species is Reki. Funny enough, the the genus is not like elephant is the genus for Asian elephants. Ah. But funny, this is actually not elephant. This actually turned out to be Paleolaxodon Reki. Uh, and Paleolaxodon was pre- like th- some of these got to be like the biggest land mammals to ever live. Like I think Paleolaxodon nematicus was like 17 feet tall. It was straight up the Olifants from Lord of the Rings. Like, Jeez. Yeah, they, like that's like almost that's like as tall as a house. It's it, it rivals the size like Paleolaxodon nematicus would have been bigger than some dino. I think that might have been even bigger than T Rex. Yeah, that seven. That's like. That's like three and a half of me. No. Yeah, that's like almost exactly three of me. Like you're like five foot ten, right? Six, six feet even. Uh, 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 wait. You're wait. You're. I thought we were we were, we were the same size. I think. Like Are we. Yeah, like like we're yeah we're around the same height. Uh, I went I went to the endocrinologist like a month ago. They did the thing with the. Thing. I because like I always keep measuring myself and I always think I'm maybe six feet tall, but I always come up as five foot ten. Hmm. That's weird. But yeah, they're like three of me, like three and a half of me or something. It's gi- it's gigantic. It's huge. it's huge. Actually, hey Google, how tall are giraffes? A northern giraffe that is adult and male is between four hundred fifty-seven point two and six hundred nine point six centimeters tall. Okay, uh, F- fifteen to twenty feet tall. Yeah, damn. So that means it would have been taller than some giraffes. Like mm-hmm. obviously, mo- like some giraffes could probably get taller, but it's like. You know they have the same number of um, vertebral oh, columns. Oh, oh yeah, do. neck vertebrae yeah. as humans. Yeah, seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I I've but always longer. Again, I always loved this book. Oh, and I got but also I've got to say the artistry is so good. Like this. Or are they show me? Do they got gigantopith? Gigantopithecus. No, they don't have Gigantopithecus. Um, I this one I love. Like I, again, like just I just imagine seeing this thing around. Just, just chilling. Yeah, like. Ah, uh, cause like, you, like you probably would remember this from Walking with Beasts, right? Yeah. From the episode Next yeah. of Kin. Although, uh, speaking of prehistoric creatures, uh, I do, ha- I do. What were you about to say? I just thought about the worst thought I've ever thought. What? I just, the freaking what was the name of that? The the big big elephant, the seventeen foot tall one. Oh, Paleolaxodon nematicus. Paleolaxodon nematicus. Their penis to body ratio must have been insane. Oh body. God! Don't talk about their penises. <laughs> Don't talk about their penises. You know what's the you know what's other funny Dude, thing? Think about their poops. <laughs> God, they they, they would shit up britches. Dude, I wonder how many. I wonder how much pounds of like Come. plant matter <laughs> <laughs> that too now. <laughs> Whoa! Imagine wait for... a second. You're right, that's a real question. <laughs> but I wonder how much pound how many pounds of food per day they had to eat. I mean, elephants like, already themselves. have to eat a ton of food. Yeah, so that's it's what like, I'm saying. But the funny thing is, like, even though paleo like paleo Laxodon was like the largest land mammal ever, there were some species of paleo that were smaller than today's elephants. Huh. Like, were, like, like, pig, like, I think like there was one called the Sicilian dwarf elephant, and that was a, a, a species of Paleolaxodon. Uh, so it's That's like, interesting. Yeah, again, it is really cool. And speaking of pre of prehistoric creatures, um, I actually have a new show announcement that I want to announce for the channel. Uh, 
I've I've been thinking about this all week. It's like you know what I want to I want to try this, and I have a new show uh, that I'm currently in. Uh, I'm currently writing for, and it is called Prehistory in Five. Basically, what this is is it's gonna be like 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 videos that are up to five minutes long, quick bites of like of fun uh, of like fun facts of each uh, yeah, of short, like pre- digestible That's yeah, neat. Pre- prehistoric creatures yeah. along with along with mixing it with comedy and whatnot um, and, and and stuff uh, and and uh, yeah basically and how do, I'm trying to figure out other ways to describe it. It's also like 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 it'll have like it'll. Like some portions will will have me sitting here talking to the camera, but then other times it'll be I'll be like outside and you'll have like a a, a an, an image of the creature, like a transparent image of the creature next to me, and oh, it'll show, be cool. showing how big it is. And I've gotten someone to help me out with that. It's this uh, dude named Harry Wilson, uh, who who has who has a bunch of paleo art and whatnot, and. Uh, that's ba- super cool. Yeah, and basically, I'll be, we'll be I'll be using his. He's also gonna be like I'm also gonna be crediting crediting him as executive producer, uh, as a co-executive producer and whatnot, uh, because he like he's providing images and he's also probably gonna so uh, also consult me on uh you know the actual facts. yeah the facts and whatnot. I'm gonna, I don't know quite a bit myself, but it's like this dude like literally do, do be having that PhD in it. Uh wait, P- what does he say? A PhD? No, I I was. It was I, mean, I don't know if he has a PhD I, or not. Either. Uh, but he does. Uh, frequently, you know, always check for yeah, no, like two, two heads are better than one though. That's that's for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, he uh, like he he check he frequently looks for like you know new fossil images and whatnot so he can make these creatures. That's and cool. the first two episodes that uh. That are good. Like again, I haven't filmed anything. Hopefully, you, maybe you can help me film. Yeah, I can, I can definitely be a cameraman for sure. Yeah, and thanks. And the first two episodes that I'm gonna be like each. I think each season will be like will be like eight episodes. Okay. Yeah. Again, like each are gonna be like up to five minutes. And the first couple of episodes that I'm writing right now, I've like are gonna be of Light of uh, and the second one is gonna be the aforementioned Dinotherium. Um. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. Bless you. No, I'm not sneezing. I'm, oh. I'm coughing, but uh, but thanks anyway. But yeah, and this guy's art is is really good, really detailed, really high, like really high quality. Like these are like, uh, like this one's like, like nearly five k. Uh, but it's like yeah, um, uh, and. Yeah, like I'm not gonna say too much right now because right now it's in the writing stages, uh, and he and I are already trying to figure out a way to uh, have more regular conversations about this. But yeah, I am right now, you know, can I, I just I want to try some other stuff that that you know uh, that can help. Like, so I'm how to try things. Diverse, diversify the content. Yeah, because yeah, I, I really do find this stuff to be really fascinating. And, uh, you know, just, and, you know, hopefully five minute episodes aren't going to be too much. And, and like I said, this, this is also going to involve comedy. Like for example, with, uh, the, uh, like some, like, uh, like basically the first episode again with Lia Plardon is going to be explaining, you know, cause in walking with dinosaurs, this was featured in, in episode three of walking with dinosaurs as being like an 80 two foot long carnivore when in reality it was like a quarter of that size right and it's just the, the the story and how this thing was oversized to a quadruple level is beyond insane uh and and uh yeah so and, and like it's and so uh yeah it's combining real science with meme dumb meme humor that that i'm notorious for although maybe not really notorious because no one knows who the fuck i am but like uh yeah, yeah. but i get you <laughs> but yeah i know who you are it's all that matters no, exactly okay. but yeah i i am really excited to uh you know yeah no dude that sounds exciting as, as hell dude that sounds like it's gonna be awesome yeah and luckily i actually have a big tape measure that can stretch, stretch up to 100 feet so i we, we can actually get like fully accurate measurements of how long each creature would be and whatnot right. so uh yeah I, I am excited to uh check that out, to at least start production on that and whatnot uh so yeah uh, but also this thing I didn't tell you, uh, th- uh this thing, um, 
uh, this next thing that I'm about to talk about, um, I haven't told you about it yet because I wanted to get your fresh reaction to it. Okay. And because, uh, you know, the Suicide Squad is coming out uh, next week, or probably by the time this comes out, this week. Um, you know, James Gunn's directing it. Um, yeah. Um, oh, oh, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, James Gunn is directing it. I'm really looking forward to the Suicide Squad. It looks like a ton of fun. And you were really excited for the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I thought I thought the trailers looked pretty pretty awesome. And you were calling King Shark cute. Cute. He is super cute. He's incredibly cute. Well, the reviews for the Suicide Squad have just come out. Okay, let's look. All right. And, uh, and uh, you might be happy about this because so far... Boop. So far, it sits at ninety six ninety six percent with ninety reviews. Now, granted, uh, let me let's. I'm going to check right now to see if it's gone up or down or whatnot. Uh, yeah, right now, ha- yeah, it's uh, it's still at ninety six percent. But yeah, this is doing a lot better than I thought. Uh, I already thought the Suicide Squad was probably going to get some good reviews, but man, ninety six percent. With 90 reviews, like, that's, that means it's probably either going to stay in, like, the 90s or maybe even high 80s, but, man, uh, yeah, does this give you a lot of confidence for this? Yeah, Suicide no, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I mean, I've been excited to watch it, but yeah, you know, I thought it looked pretty good from the trailers. Yeah, this is and this is a pretty sure. This is a pretty. This is a far cry from where the first Suicide Squad yeah. currently sets, because the first Suicide Squad's like like 26 percent. Yep. Yeah, which uh, is even if you combine the critical and audience score, it wouldn't reach 94. Even then, uh, even though I don't really yeah, trust audience scores. No, it doesn't mean anything. I was just saying, like, even it's a, it's a it's a pretty. But man, like, like I think currently right now this mean this means it's like the highest rated DC film of all time. Now, Grant, I'm not I don't expect that to be stay that way forever, but I mean, still that that is you know really significant. What did Joker? Uh, sixty eight percent. Sixty eight. Wow. Really? Yeah, I can like even personally for me, Joker is probably still the best DC movie since The Dark Knight. But I can probably see why some people would be would be kind of disturbed by it, like yeah. like like like. like and whatnot, but oh, for me, like I, I really, really love Joker. Uh, I don't really, for I don't really expect the Suicide Squad to to, to surpass Joker. I mean, really, cause I I really hold Joker to a really high standard. But like, this is like, like hell, this is even great for James Gunn standards. Cause, oh like, yeah, yeah. Because like you know, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh volume one yeah the guardians of the galaxy currently holds at 92 percent and guardians of the galaxy volume two has 85 percent don like oh wait, no he didn't direct on the dead but he did he did write it uh it, slither has 86 percent but yeah i'm i am really really excited for suicide for the for the suicide jesus you yeah for I'm... everything okay no my phone just made a it made noise without me wanting it to. Oh, dang. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm also excited for Suicide Squad. I think it's gonna. Be, I think it's gonna be good. I think I'm and gonna from, enjoy it. And from what I've, and from what I've heard, there is both a mid credit scene and post credit scene at the very end. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely gonna stick around for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. On to the next subject, and this is also kind of a bit of a downer. Um, uh, uh, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, Arthur's been canceled. Remember Arthur? What? Well, that's supposed to. Bum, bum. What? It's supposed to be the Arthur little theme song. Oh, that does not sound like the Arthur theme song. Yeah, I tried my best, but but, but yeah, I, regret, I haven't seen Arthur in a long time. I think like maybe like the last episode. Oh no, of... what I did was Rugrats. But yeah, yeah damn, right. that sucks. Yeah, like uh, I was supposed hey, to. Hey, what a wonderful kind of day. day. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like I will say, um, twenty five seasons is a is pretty damn is pretty damn great for, uh, for a kid series and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I think like I, I I hadn't really seen Arthur in a long time. Although I think I did see like the episode where like Mister Radburn turned out to be gay and he mm-hmm. got married. Uh, like that's like maybe like the most recent episode I remember watching that. I really only watched it because I wanted to see how they did that. And, I mean, I thought they did that pretty well. But uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on Arthur being canceled? Well, I mean, obviously my, you know, I kind of I kind of grew up with that. Yeah. That show. Uh, it's I'm sad to see it go, but all good things must come to an end, didn't it? Even all bad things must come to an end, like Caillou. Yeah, all, all all things must come to an end. 
Yeah, unless uh, unless that unless that thing is uh, I I was trying to think I can't really I don't know but even unless then, it's Betty White because she's immortal yeah if she is immortal God man, don't make me think about Betty White ending like that would be that would be so you know sad. she's older than sliced bread yeah like, really? well commercially available sliced bread yeah yeah my grandfather was older than the Wizard of Oz so is Betty White I think yeah. I mean, like my 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 grandfather was probably like older than the Wizard of Oz, probably like I think either by like a couple of months or maybe a few a couple of years. But I mean, granted, he died in two thousand eighteen, so I mean, whatever. But my my girlfriend's granddad is definitely older than the Wizard of Oz. I think he was born in nineteen. Man, it's not so weird living in a living in a world before the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. That is insane. But uh, yeah, like um. I do remember Arthur being like the you know a, you know good, like it, it was a it was a good show for kids and whatnot. Hell, yeah. even I think even like the the brief spinoff show Postcards from Buster had one of the first uh, like showed one of the very first you know uh, uh, gay relationships mm-hmm. like like those like those like this one segment with two moms. Uh, you know, I think it was like a live action thing, not not even animated. It was like real two moms, and it's yep. like it was like groundbreaking and whatnot. Like and and so uh, yeah, you know, it's sad to see Arthur go, but you know, um, it like twenty five seasons is not uh, it's a lot. Uh, that it, it that did it did really well. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I think although I think like maybe like earlier this year or last year, like Caillou also got canceled, which uh, that's probably one that probably should have been canceled from for a long time now. Because have you ever, have you ever seen it's, clips? It's a, of, it was a weird show. I remember Caillou watching was, when I was a, a kid. Caillou was a little fuckhead. Like he yeah. was a bastard. Yeah. Oh, he was. Uh, you there was literally a scene in Caillou where like. It was like a flashback or something where he, where he walked up to his baby sister and he just just grabs her cheek like pinching and whatnot like and with a mean face and oh and the book in the book it was even worse because he bit his baby sister. Charlie bit my finger. Oh God! Like Caillou is a ma- like he's a monster. He's a menace. He's a freaking menace. He, he is I want, a menace. I want pictures of him on my desk right now. I want I want pictures of Caillou right now. <laughs> uh, I want them on my desk yesterday. God, I, man, that would yeah. But yeah, like I said, Ar, like Ar, I know like I know it's a weird thing to bring up, but it's like I don't know Arthur. You know, it was something we grew up with as kids and whatnot. Uh, definitely had some great morals in there, but you know, it's ending. So yeah, yeah. hard barks are people too. Yeah, yeah, that's the funny thing. I didn't even realize until like this, like like late last decade that he was an aardvark. He, he doesn't look like he an aardvark. He doesn't particularly look very aardvarkish. Can oh, you pull up a picture of an aardvark I can't. real quick? I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a keyboard. Although yeah, I will I can... say, although I, did you know that the original voice for the brain is like now like a really, a really, uh, like, the, like you know brain? Pinky and the brain? No, no, not brain. Like brain from Oh, Arthur. brain, yes. Alan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently the original voice for him is now like a, a, a really conservative YouTuber and whatnot. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, no, no, Dave, Bell, they... Dave Bell is a... Is a Drake, convic- Drake, Drake, Drake Bell. Bell is a convicted pedophile now. <laughs> so some some people do fall pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. My, funny enough, my, my sibling Alex didn't even know that Brain's name was Alan. Yeah, I that was one I found out pretty late. His his name was Alan. Yeah, but I mean, it's how it's come just, nobody it's, knew his name was Alan? I, don't know, I knew I don't, his name was Alan for a long I don't, I don't time. Remember, it, it's just one of those things. It's, it's a minor detail, you know. Minor Brain is de- a lot more of a catchy, catchy nickname. I just, I always knew his name was Alan. Like there was like a, this whole episode where like he failed a test. Like, oh man, I don't want to go by Brain anymore. I want to go by Alan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it sucks about his voice actor. I mean, I guess at least he's not his. At least Drake, his original Drake voice actor. Uh, at least his, uh, his original voice actor. I mean, I can't really say for, like, whatever voice actor voiced him now. Well, I never thought I would be in prison, but... Oh, he's not going I to prison. I found a way. I found a way. No, he's not, he's not going to prison. He, yeah, has, no. he has two years of probation. Two years of probation. Uh, which, uh... Ah, oh, man. I should have seen that coming. But if I just pay these fines, I won't have to serve time. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh boy! Moving away from that, <laughs> from that mess, um, you know, we finally got some details on Hawkeye, the new Hawkeye series coming to Disney Plus, uh, starring Jeremy Renner, Jeremy Renner, and Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. Oh, yeah, and uh, apparently, uh, like this is our first, this is our first image for 
um, for Hawkeye, and it's they've, it's also been announced that it's going to be it's going to start streaming on uh, November twenty fourth on Disney Plus okay. around Thanksgiving uh, holiday and whatnot. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Hawkeye. This does look like a really cool. Uh, I mean, I'm granted like you know, I think like uh, like it will it, it, it's it is fast it is pretty interesting that it's going to uh, have Haley Steinfeld in it, and apparently you know if you've well. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but I will just say there is a character that has been introduced in a recent MCU project that will be uh, appearing in Hawkeye. But, you know, I am... But, yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on on uh, Hawkeye and, you know, it, you know, being released November 24th and this first image and whatnot? Well, with all the other Disney Plus series that I've seen so far, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty pumped. I think that oh, um, yeah. WandaVision was great. Um, Captain oh, oh. Falcon and the, the Winter Captain Soldier. Fal- yeah, like, <laughs> Captain, Fal- Captain Falcon. It's not Captain Falcon. Yeah, I, was thinking, I, was thinking, I was thinking of the Falcon Punch guy. <laughs> the, Fa- the Falcon, the and, Falcon, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Captain Falcon, bro. That would have been at very first, different. At show. first, I almost called him Captain America, Captain America, and I was like, "Wait, no, no." And then, and then I was whoa, like, "Wait, whoa. Captain." Well, yeah, you know, but but Captain Captain Falcon, <laughs> yeah, dude, Falcon. <laughs> but yeah, that and Wandavision and Loki have all been fantastic. So um, we'll be talking about those here in a bit, a mm-hmm. little bit more about those here in a bit. But I am really looking forward. Like Marvel's been killing it with their TV oh, yeah. shows, yeah. right? At least like the ones that are actually MCU can. Like I literally got into a debate with this one dude who tried to say, "Yo, oh, well, Agents of Shield and the Netflix shows, no, those are connected to the MCU." It's like really, and I was just like, "Really? Then how come the movies never reference them?" Like, yeah, the shows will reference the movies, but how come the movies never reference the shows? That's because the shows, like for a while, you know, Kevin Feige, like there was a point in time, uh, 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 there was a point in time where, like, you know, before 2015, uh, Kevin Feige answered to Ike Perlmutter, who was the big head of Marvel at the time, but he did not work well with Perlmutter at all. Like Perlmutter, it was actually because of Ike Perlmutter as to why we didn't get like you know female Marvel stuff, like female Marvel movies or Black Panther for a long time because he his like Ike Perlmutter's claim for you know why they didn't why he didn't want Kevin Feige to do any female superhero stuff was because they don't like you know you look at movies like Catwoman, Elektra, and Supergirl and you see female superheroes don't do well. It's like no, it's not. Because they're female. No, it's, because it's, they're, it's because those movies were just garbage. Yeah, and like, and look at that when you got to, yeah, and and look at that when, uh, but yeah, basically, yeah, like it, it got so bad between Perlmutter and Feige to where Kevin Feige told Bob Bob Iger, get me away from Ike Perlmutter. Like I don't want to have like he is like. I, I can't work with this guy. It, yeah. Move me or and, I walk. And like not not even not only that but like don't get me wrong like. I, I didn't I didn't really like Agents of Shield that much, I'll admit that. Um I thought Daredevil was pretty good, but like yeah. If, they never they were never the, remembered. Yeah, the yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If if you were to ask me whether they're part of the MCU, I would say no. Um because they're not. I, and and the and so basically with uh, yeah Kevin Feige said move get me away from Pearl Mutter or I walk from Marvel Studios and so then Kevin Feige moved uh, I mean no, I'm not Kevin, then Bob Iger said all right fine like we'll we'll do this he moved Kevin Feige under uh, Alan Horn's supervision who was the head of Disney Film and whatnot right. And so that's pre- that's really why the movies and the shows never like the, like the movies never reference the shows because Kevin Feige do, did not like working with Perlmutter and really those weren't his creations, and so that's so really these new Disney Plus shows are like the actual canon. Although even that, although I will say, um, what if is probably not even really canon because it's yeah. like it's still like a. But I mean, own. it's kind of weird for like Perlmutter to, to be like, yeah, I don't I don't want female leads in my stuff. But then also the three, no, the three like examples. Four, four, well, the four or five Netflix series that got greenlit. Jessica Jones. Well, Luke, I mean, I think it was Luke really Cage. more referring to films, like, like. Even yeah, that, I mean, his, I, I I'm guess. not defending him. I'm just saying, like he, like he said the films, which again, I just like. Why does that? Why, like, it, it had nothing to. And look at that. No, when, yeah, it was a red when, herring for sure. Like, and look at the two and. And when you look at the in, at the two, you know, female Marvel movies that Marvel's done now, you know, Captain Marvel and Black Widow, p- 
people really liked those movies. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, there were a fair share of people that that didn't, but a lot of those that crowd, from what I could tell, were mo- like actual internet trolls that were just like, oh, my women in movies. Yeah, I mean, not. I, I can definitely see some criticism. I can uh, even even with Black Widow, I'm starting. I'm 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 still kind of teetering on Black Widow. A bit. I'm, uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely mad on Black Widow. And there there definitely were valid critiques of both of those movies, but a lot. I'm just saying that like yeah, I, I also saw a fair share of people just saying that yeah. thing I said. Yeah, and so. Yeah, and and so like yeah, like the like, Ike Perlmutter's claims were bullshit from the beginning, and uh, and funny enough, Ike Perlmutter is no longer the head of uh, Marvel. It's like Kevin Feige is not the head of everything Marvel. Like he now controls the movies, the TV shows, the games, which which is also kind of funny because I think he, that's also when they stopped doing new episodes of of all those pre Disney Plus Marvel shows. Yeah. Because it's like, I think, really, that's why I don't really believe the rumors that, you know, people are saying, oh, Charlie Cox is going to be in uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, even though none of the major trades have ever said anything about that. Like, like Variety never said it, Hollywood Reporter never said it, Deadline never said it. It's like, I, that's why I don't think... Char- Charlie Cox, he was the... Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't think... I, he, I know, he, I, I never heard that. There's like big, ru- there's like rumors, but again, none of the major trades tra- tra- have said anything. So, which makes me think it's not happening. And, it's, and I, I'm just like, e- I, even if it does happen, a cameo doesn't really mean I know, too, too much. I don't even know. It's just even like I just don't think Kevin Feige would do that anyway. Because again, he didn't really have control of Daredevil at the time, or at least not that ver- Like he didn't control the Charlie Cox Daredevil. That, that was like the whole Ike Perlmutter thing. But regardless, um, yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to Hawkeye um, because, again, these Disney Plus shows have been really good so far. And, again, we're going to be talking about one of them here in a bit. Um, But, um, yeah. Uh, So, yeah. Also, I don't know if you've seen this the first two episodes of this yet. Uh, I have. But uh, there's this new Disney Plus show on there called uh, Turner and Hooch. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a reimagining of the film made by Tom uh, starring Tom Hanks. Except this one stars. Uh, probably the better half of Drake and Josh, uh, the one who hasn't done anything controversial, Josh Peck. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, did you check this out? No, not yet. Oh, man, I, I sent you the email. But it's yeah. like, regardless, um, you know, I've... I saw I've I've seen the first two episodes of Turner and Hooch. Like the first episode came out like a couple weeks ago. The second episode was like, it, how how has it been so far? I'm liking Turner and Hooch. Yeah. Mainly because of Josh Peck. Like right, Josh. Because. I mean, like the, the other, like, the other guy's kind of a dog. No, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> Sorry, he is a dog. Resist. But like Josh Peck, and damn, it, I'll even have to say this about Drake Bell. Even like, again, I'm just talking about his acting and whatnot. Drake Bell and Josh Peck, their comedic uh, comedy is really it's good. It's really good. Yeah, they played off of each other super well. Even hell, I even even when watching some of the episodes of Drake and Josh, like even when the jokes themselves are kind of and yeah. written, yeah. like they make them hilarious. Especially Josh Peck. Like there's like what like what's one gag you always see in dog movies? You know, the dog runs, the leash gets tied up around the actor's legs. Like, whoa, whoa! But Josh Peck, he does the whole whoa, like yeah, the. Yeah, the Josh Peck yeah. scream and yeah. it makes it so it funny. It, yeah. And Josh Peck really does sell this whole thing. Like I don't know how he does it. Like this dude, I uh, honestly, honestly, Josh Peck I think is like is one of the most underrated comedic actors out there. Maybe the most underrated comedic actor cuz I like I like this dude has so much talent and yet no one really works with him all that much, which is weird because yeah. I've heard good things about him. Um yeah, well, he's, he doesn't cause problems. Like, Drake Bell, who may be talented, also causes problems. But, again, not that's not Josh Peck's whole thing. Um, and I will say this. Even when it comes to dramatic acting in the first episode, he nails the drama. There's a scene that was actually... I was actually kind of getting emotional because purely because of his performance. And it's like, damn, like he's putting everything into this. Like, ugh. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I'm. Uh, now I will say some of the things, uh, like like sometimes whenever there's like CGI fire, it kind of looks weird. Like sometimes the action is pretty cool. Sometimes the action is is like very hyper mm-hmm. edited. But overall, I mean, this is a very charming show. I uh, so far I'm I am enjoying it. And also I will say there's an, there there there's like uh what is it? 
there's like this uh, overarching mystery that's starting to build up, and I'm really, you know, that is one way to get me invested. It's like, huh, wh- wh- where's this whole thing going to lead? Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I but yeah, I would definitely, you know, suggest you uh, check yeah, this no, out. Yeah, no, no, I'll definitely start it tonight. Yeah, um, and I think like the first episode was directed by McG. McG. Yeah, like the, like a director who's kind of so and so, but he also directed We Are Marshall. Yeah, uh, I have not seen that movie in a long time. I think the last time I saw that movie, I was in high school, maybe. Yeah, was it in high school? No, high high school. Yes, it. Like like that, like they showed like like they showed you high like they showed you We Are Marshall. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I will say like we we're like, like one person I did not r- know was I like, did like I completely forgot was in We Are Marshall. Uh, Anthony Mackie. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, he's in this movie. Yeah. I was like, damn. Uh, my my friend uh, Kathleen Corstangi's dad is also in it for like a shot. He's a, he was an extra. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I like I said, I would definitely check uh, recommend r- watching. Yeah. Oh, oh. Don't d- do that. Yeah, that, that thing is really. Uh, it's uh, the. Yeah, like, they're, not sc- they're not They're not screwed in right. But yeah. Uh, but. Um, just, just leave it alone. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely suggest checking this out. Also, here's where we get to a little bit more of conversation time and whatnot. Uh, hold on, let me, I'm going to pause this real quick. Yeah. Anyways, um, our next topic is going to be like, you've, I'm I'm hoping to God you've, you've, uh, you've caught up with this. We're going to be talking about low. Yeah. We're going to be. We're going to be doing a little bit of spoiler talk over Loki, the, uh, like the season finale and whatnot. Granted, this Mm -hmm. is like a, almost like a month after this, but still, um, I, like, Loki was a very uh, fascinating show, and, yeah. like, and, like, cause, like, I, I wasn't always sure where it was going, um, but, you know, oh, like, before we get into, like, the big spoiler stuff, and uh, don't worry, we will have, like, a little spoiler alert, oh, I'll probably, uh, we, like, when we get into spoilers, I'll put in a little spoiler alert and whatnot, we won't put it there yet, but overall, like, what are your general thoughts on Loki, so, on, on Loki? I really liked it, start start to finish. Honestly, I thought like honestly at the beginning it kind of had me a little like confused, like where like where are they going with this? And and I kind of had that sensation honestly throughout the entire. Like, it was like, a, it was like yeah. again, it's like an overarching yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. You you just you really just I was personally on the edge of my seat for the whole the whole ride, um, always sort of trying to to figure out what was going to be behind the next you know turn. But um, I think it did a great job with with its like keeping you invested in the mystery and then also the reveals and stuff like the the i guess answers so to speak to all of these questions that it creates um i i i really liked it a lot um but yeah yeah i i was really i really enjoyed loki too this is probably my third favorite of the disney plus shows like yeah that's, I, I, that's I, probably about right i go it. i go uh falcon winter soldier wandavision and then falcon Win- and then and then loki yeah um uh like first off uh yeah, I, I did really enjoy the show. I thought, I thought the cast was really was 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 really fun. The, Owen Wilson's always a treat. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I heard him go. Yeah, wow. I don't think I heard a single wow. Yeah. Um. You know. Not even a chow. Yeah. Some of some of the stuff was just absolutely crazy. Off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Just out. We'll get a little bit of that in the, here in a bit. Uh. You know, we have Tara Strong as Miss Minutes. Um. I'll talk about her here in a bit because uh, I, I I do have some things to say. But I will say, um, I did really, I, I did really enjoy Loki, and yeah, honestly, I don't think we can really talk much more about it unless we get into the spoilers because, uh, because holy hell, like there's so much to talk about in terms of spoilers. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll put up this thing right here. Also, I'll probably also do the same, do the same with this. Uh, whenever you see this go away, you know, that'll be, you know, there'll be, then there'll be like no more spoilers, but right now we, we've got to talk about spoilers. Uh, so again, once you see this go away, no more spoilers. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Damn. I did not expect, I, I already like, here's the thing. We already knew, uh, the Kang, the Conqueror yeah. was going to be in Ant-Man and the Wasp yep. Quantumanium. Mm-hmm. I like, at least bef- like, I kind of had theories that he was going to show up in subsequent episodes, but before I watched the series, I did not expect them to actually introduce Kang here. Yeah, no, me neither. That was probably the biggest, like, the I, I had the surprise Pikachu face. I was like, huh? 
Yeah. Oh, actually, I forgot. I, I, I'm not even showing him. Yeah, Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors, who was from, uh, I think he's from Love... Ca he's, he's currently nominated for Best Lead Actor in a Drama for uh, for uh, the an, an Emmy for that, for uh, Lovecraft Country. Yeah, I've been meaning to start that. I have not seen Lovecraft Country, although yeah, apparently they're not I've... renewing it for a second season. Sad. Yeah. Well, at least I don't. That don't mean that there's, you know, there's only one season to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, but I, although I think like they haven't really, they haven't really done a season. They're not doing a season two because they haven't really found a good idea for season two. Okay. Okay. So at least I can respect that. Yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, and I will say he was portrayed very differently than I thought he was going to be. Because like, Grant, yeah. I, you probably do you know anything about King of the Conqueror? Uh, the from comics? the comics, yeah. But I, I, I've always learned to sort of understand that there's going to be differences like, when when you yeah, take it, you know because you got you got you got to have some artistic interpretation yeah even in Ca captain america civil war is yeah. so different from the yeah, comics from the, com dude, the comics are and and the, here's the thing about the civil war comics like for me because maybe i i feel this way more about like secret wars but but they can they were definitely at least civil war 2 was was kind of convoluted it was it was hard to keep track of everything because of how much you had to read but but yeah it was way different than the comics 100 percent. but it was still really good yeah i, I love mean, hell i love uh, the uh, captain america civil war is probably one of my favorite mc yeah. movies like uh yeah probably actually it's probably my favorite mc movie that's not an avengers title it, like i still put avengers endgame and infinity war above it but i probably DK bro age of ultron was the best avengers movie I'm not gonna lie, I really love Age of Ultron. I, like, for, like, I, honestly, I'm gonna say I think Age of Ultron is the most underrated MC movie. I, I, thought, I thought it was. I thought it was all right. I, like everyone hates that. Like people hate that movie I, now. I thought. It, I think. I think out of out of all of them, it's for me the weakest. I I don't hate it. Like honestly, I just, I, honestly, I thought the I thought the Avengers movies, at least for me, like got better with each installment. Mm -hmm. it's like I thought with Age of Ultron, it's like you know it got darker. It got like the action yeah. got even more crazy. Like the like the villain, I really liked James Spader as Ultron. It's like I don't know, I, and even just the little character moments, like you know the uh, like Hawkeye's house or the party scene, all that stuff. I just those little moments, I just thought like I just thought were so cool and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I just I just felt that they um, the the only real big big gripe I have with um, Avengers: Age of Ultron is is that I felt that they didn't give enough screen time to like Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver. I, I um, honestly like I like it's at least especially where 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 uh, Scarlet Witch has gone now. Yeah, it's like I feel like you know I feel like they used her as well as they could have in that film. Um, Maybe, uh, but regardless. Regardless, I don't know anything about King the Conqueror, and I was and and since I don't know anything about King the Conqueror, I was kind of expecting him to be. Cause all I know is he's like in the comics, he's like this really, you know, like one of the big baddies in the oh, yeah. comics. Yeah, no, he's, so was, an, he's an absolute and so son of a bitch type guy. And so, like, I was kind of thinking, like, like when they announced him for Ant Man three, I was like, mm -hmm. Ant Man three, that's a weird place to to, to introduce him. him. Yeah. And he, but the, even then, when we saw him in Loki, I was not expecting him to be like this big joke, like, hey, yeah. <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. whatnot. Although, I expect him to be pretty, pretty like, serious, real, like, real, yeah, like and, Thanos and level, threatening. But, yeah. But in this case, like, but even then. You know, in this episode, like, like again, since since we're talking about spoilers, mm. this version of Kang, which uh, he he calls himself, uh, uh, what was it? He who remains. He, he who call, remains. Yeah. But it's it's still Kang. Yeah. Like, it's still Kang. But re yeah. But regardless, uh, he says, you know, oh, now that you like, if you kill me, you're gonna release a bunch of other versions of me. So we could probably get. That's an interesting thing about Kang the Conqueror is that, is that like with this guy now we have so many ways they could that he could play this character like mm -hmm. we might get a more methodical version of Kang we might get a really silly Kang like for Ant-Man the Wasp and this is a very interesting idea for a villain I haven't oh, yeah. seen all in, in the movie in the MCU up to this point so I'm Same. And so I'm really interested to, interested to see where they go with this. And this is definitely going to allow Jonathan Majors to really shine as an actor. I oh, agree. Also, I forgot. He also played Delroy Lindo's son in The Fly in the yeah. Bloods. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're actually right about that. Yeah, I also that also crossed right over my horizons, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I am really, but yeah, I am really fascinated to see where he goes with uh, with this and whatnot. Um, oh, wait. Nope. That, that's not it. Yeah. Also, I will say... Um, I fucking called it. I fucking knew something was up with Miss Minutes. With Miss Minutes, I yeah, knew from the dude, beginning. You were saying from the get go, yeah. Because like, what did I say in the in the beginning? I said, "All right, 
uh, for some reason, she's on the poster. She's on the poster. Uh, she has her own poster, uh, like an individual character poster. And Tara Strong's Tara Strong. name, Tara yeah. Strong's name is in the main credits, not just the little yeah, black credit. Yeah, and then, and then, like, and then she's also, she, you know, she's she's very talented voice actress. You know, she's a big, she's I mean, a like, big one. No, I mean, here's the thing. I would actually, ex- I'm not saying, like, I would expect them to just put her in like a throwaway role. Yeah, but they like, didn't. Yeah, because, because here's the thing. Again, that's initially, you know, I was thinking, wait. Because, like, the, 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 again, when she was in the main yeah, present, which yeah. like, like, like the actual f- flash images and whatnot and her own little, t- little title card, usually when you have voice actors do that, you usually just put them in, like, the black background, tiny white credits and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I was like... Okay, there's no way this character isn't like isn't somewhat important if if they're actually Giving doing a title card, yeah, with Miss Minutes, and then the fucking jump scare was like, hey y'all, I was like, ah, get the what the fuck, I was like, what the, I was like, I fucking knew she was a bad guy, I fucking knew there was something up with her, like it's just th- th- she's just so too innocent and nice looking, yep, and again, too friendly, yeah, too friendly, not it's enough just, danger, not enough. I don't know. I hope too much get, composure. I hope I hope we get more Miss Minutes in in uh, season two. Which yeah, granted, uh, which granted that it sort of goes into another thing we're talking about. That Loki is the first MCU show right now to be confirmed to getting a in season, season two. two. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because they said like the post grad scene says Loki will return in season two. It's like oh my god, that that which means this story's not over. Not over by a long shot. And. Which just opens up so many possibilities. Like, where are they going to go? Because, like, basically, this show ends with now that they've killed Kang. Now, now that they've king- killed this, at least this version of Kang, they've unleashed the multiverse. Yeah. They've now, like, they even have like this big visual, of, like the singular timeline. But then once Kang's killed, like this version of Kang's dead, it starts splitting off. It's like, oh no! Which this ha- this is probably the MCU project so far that has had the most relevance on the MCU yeah. as a whole. Yeah, it's, re- it's really starting to get into what I think is going to be some very relevant stuff for Phase 4. Yeah, especially since, uh, uh, you know, since Loki is going to appear in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, yeah. So that means we're not only getting Doctor Strange. I'm pretty excited for that. I'm super excited for that because, like, they said this is going to be, like, the grand... I don't think it's really going to be Marvel's first horror movie because, like, like Kevin Feige said, oh, he, it's going to be scary, but it's, it's going to be the scariest Marvel film today. It's like, well, I mean, that's okay, not... Okay, dude, that's not saying a lot. Do you know how scary your movies have been? But even then, like, the original director of the first Doctor Strange, Scott Derrickson, he, uh, you know, uh, parted ways with Doctor Strange 2 because he wanted to go a bit scarier. And... You know, they didn't want to go that scary, so it's like, okay, uh, now Sam Raimi's directing Doctor Strange 2. Which, I mean, granted, it's Kevin Feige, I trust what he, I trust him, but... Yeah, but Sam Raimi, bro, have you ever cr- seen the Evil Dead, dog? You know the funny thing about, about the Evil Dead movies? What? Uh, I, th- I thought the first one was god-awful. Well, I, I mean, the first one, I don't think the first one's as good as the second one. <laughs> no, oh, no, here's the thing, no, here's the thing. Army uh, of Darkness is pretty uh, funny. No, I'll get to the, I'll get to the sequel, I'll get, I'll get to the sequel, but, like, the first, uh, the first Evil Dead, I honestly really hated Was it, it. the effects? No, not even just that. It was everything. Everything was, it, was, was just tree so rape? was just so horrible. Yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> no, no, it's not even. No, here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Uh, the sequels got intentionally campy. Like, yeah, that's where things actually started. Like I thought, Evil Dead Two was was funny, and then I thought yeah. Army of Darkness was great. Yeah, I loved bit, Army of Darkness. Yeah, Army of Darkness is freaking amazing. Like the, the bit, the, the bit where he, I think, what was his name? The guy that they kept saying Poppy Joe when he got the eye in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like for me, it felt like the first Evil Dead was accidentally accidentally stupid. stupid yeah. Whereas with the whereas with the sequel, they capitalized that, on that. Yeah, yeah, they just capitalized on that. Mm-hmm. Which even the, I don't even know if They're I can accumulating really call into Army of Darkness, dude. That that oh my I God, love Army that, of Darkness. Like especially like with, with like with two <laughs> yeah Bruce the two Bruce <laughs> stuff in the Necronomicon. <laughs> Like that, like that. See that, that that was like the perfect amount of stupid. It was fire. Like it that, was fire. Yeah, yeah. Which I will say, I don't even know if I can call them sequels because technically, like they're almost like little reboots in the. Yeah, they're like, they're they're almost like the. They're almost like <laughs> reboots. The, they're almost like different timelines. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Uh, yeah. Um, but but he, it's it's cool that he's working on on. I'm I'm pretty excited for this Doctor Strange movie now. I love Sam Raimi. Yeah, although granted, I wasn't a fan of his Spider Man movies, but at the same I was. time. Yeah, uh, but well, I, I was of two of them. I didn't. I, I don't think Spider-Man Three is that good. 
Yeah, but I will say, um, I think, I, I wasn't a fan of his directing in the first Spider-Man, but really my problems with Spider-Man 2 and 3 weren't really the directing, it was more so the writing. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, once he got into Spider-Man 2 and 3, I mean, he knew how to shoot a, he knew how to make, how to, like, yeah, at least shoot think, a superhero I think Spider-Man, film. Spider-Man 2 and 3 also had some of the better VFX. Oh my god, they got, they, they were got cool. really good. Like, the, the jump from Spider-Man 1 to 2 is really night and day. You can, you can see a difference. Like, I get, like, I still think there are some visual effects in Spider-Man one that looked pretty good. Like for example, I think the um, uh, the first time we see the spider sense is really yeah. cool. Like the, we're going around the school and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but thought, then some, some of them are kind of weak. Like the, the fight like, on top of the cable car, or whatever between like oh, like the Green, green Goblin. Goblin. Yeah, yeah, Goblin. Like the, here, here's my problem with the VFX. I don't know if you noticed this, but like when I specifically that scene on top of the cable car, I noticed that it looks the, very the, stiff. It looks very stiff, and also weirdly enough, the the VFX models look to be like bigger than Tobey Maguire and uh, What's-His-Face, oh, respectively. Oh, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, yeah. They, they look to be, like, noticeably taller than than both of them. I don't know. I, I I didn't really notice any of that, but I will say a couple of other shots I thought were really good. Like, I thought the, uh, apparently the one scene where, like, in the burning building where, like, Spider-Man's dodging from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was entirely a CGI, or at yep. least, like, at least Spider-Man himself. That, that was a really good one, and yeah. the And the final shot, you know, where Spider-Man's swinging through the city, that yeah. looked, okay, fine. yeah, that looked really good. But the sequels... Yeah, they the, blew it like, out of the water. Even though I didn't like any of those, even though I didn't like any of those movies, like, like I mean, yeah, yeah, even Mary, Mary Jane was kind of annoying. Oh, uh, don't get me started on Mary yeah. Jane. <laughs> but, but I will say, uh, <laughs> even though I didn't like Spider-Man Two, I mean, that train sequence is stuff of oh, yeah, legend. Like, you have to go through me and me. Oh well, no, okay, well maybe maybe not that whole thing. But I was like, the be actual careful fight, with him; he's the, a hero. <laughs> no, I was talking about the fight itself. Yeah, the, like, fight the action was awesome. Yeah, especially at the end when he's slowing the train down. All those yeah. webs, yeah, that cool. yeah, that like that was really cool. So, but granted, at the same time, you know, uh, he's gonna be guided like like what is it? Uh, Sam Raimi's gonna be guided by Kevin Feige, so it's like I'm pretty sure Feige will make sure he doesn't screw anything up. Uh, but regardless, um, and but yeah, like so, so we're gonna be having um, Doctor Strange, uh. Wanda from uh, yeah uh, Scarlet Witch and Loki in this movie, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Doctor Strange and the Multiverse Madness is also connected to Spider-Man No Way Home. So maybe we might get Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I don't know, but it's just like it's just, this. I'm I'm just really fascinated to see what they're going to do with Doctor Strange too, because this movie looks like the. Every, at least everything surrounding this film right. just sounds insane. And obviously, since Sam Raimi's directing this, you know Bruce Campbell's going to appear in this. If I, like, the, like Bruce Campbell not appearing in a Sam Raimi movie would be about as shocking as, like, you know... Well, I, I was about to say Marvel not having a Stan Lee cameo, but uh, they can't really do that now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on Loki appearing in Doctor Strange 2? I think that's going to be it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited to see what they, they do with him. I'm glad we're going to get to see more of um, Tom Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston's yeah. Loki. I mean, again, again, seeing it, and seeing as how they're doing a season two of Loki, it's just like, what? Like, it just makes There's me... There's so many doors that they can open with this. Yeah. Oh, man. I, here's my... And here's actually a theory I have. And I, I, I'm not basing this on anything. This is just my theory. I think the multiverse is how they're going to introduce the X-Men. Because here's the thing. They can't really do the X-Men in this timeline because... You like there's not like a whole historical context to the to the to the to the, the X Men and the mutants the mutant the mutant species so it's like they kind of can't really do that but if they have a multiverse where there's like a universe with mutants they could yeah. now, now Fantastic Four they can easily do in this universe because it's just people getting powers like that's fine yeah you just um, gotta expose some dudes to space radiation yeah but but also make the movie watchable yeah uh, um well. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I was about to go on. I was about to say something, but regardless, um, but yeah, I'm I'm really fascinated. Just this whole thing around, around Loki is just really, really uh, fascinating, in my opinion. You think the next time they do Fantastic Four, you think the Human Torch should say Flame on? I mean, he probably. I, mean, I think I don't know if he will or not because, yeah. uh, because uh, like, I, think, I think it's a little campy and a little silly. I mean, but yeah, I don't think. I, I guess it depends on what what like 
tone for the movie they go for. I mean, I think the I think I, I do know we, we might have a hint of what the tone is going to be because if you remember last year in D, uh, last year's Disney's investor meeting, they didn't say a lot about Fantastic Four. They just said that there's a Fantastic Four movie coming. They didn't give a release date, but they did say that John Watts, the director of this new Spider-Man trilogy, is directing Fantastic Four. Okay, so yeah, it'll, it'll definitely have I think maybe more like a lighter feel to it. Yeah. Um, I was initially thinking that maybe, you know, uh, what's his name? Peyton Reed could have directed, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because he did the Ant-Man movies. But, yeah. Grant, you know, you know, it's uh, the Spider-Man one and hopefully, hopefully, yeah. This I'm, I am looking forward to this Fantastic Four movie. Did you, did you know that in the comic books, Spider-Man one time joined the Fantastic yeah. Four as the bombastic bag man? Ben, boy, what? Okay, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't remember what happened to his suit. I genuinely don't. I think it was either destroyed or he had to get it cleaned. <laughs> but he got a Fantastic Four jumpsuit and wore a paper bag, a brown paper bag over his head oh, and dang. called himself the Bombastic Bag Wait, Man. Actually, I just realized, in the comics, didn't Black Panther first appear in a Fantastic Four comic? Yes. Yes, he did. Oh, ah, yeah. that's interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, I. but yeah, uh, this... Loki, Doctor Strange 2, Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm like I have no fucking clue what's going to happen in like in with, like like with with how Loki ended, there's no way. Like there's no telling what could actually happen uh with this now, especially since now it's I mean, you know, at least from what we know of, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home, um uh you know, Alfred Molina's Doc Ock is, is going to be in it. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. And Jimmy Fox's Electro. So, yep. like, uh, that's Grant, gonna, that's going to be interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh, now, Grant, it should also be kept in mind that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield have not been like at least none of the major trades have said anything about them being in it. But okay, I mean, but if Tobey Maguire is in it, Bruce Campbell's got to be in it. <laughs> I mean, who know? I mean, who knows? Um, <laughs> if, if if they're putting my man Toby back in, we got to get the Bruce Campbell cameo. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind the Bruce Campbell cameos. And even yeah, though, no, they were great. <laughs> yeah, it, like, I mean, it's like so, you're late. <laughs> so, so I, say what I will about say what I will about those movies, but even then, the best part of those movies by far Bruce was. Well, actually, no, I was actually, I was about to say J.K. Simmons as. Oh Bane. yeah, J.K. Simmons. Dude, yeah. <laughs> that, and now he's back. Now he's back. <laughs> I chased him when he was freaking getting depressed because he thought. He thought he scared off Spider Man. <laughs> and then he steals a suit back. He's a menace! <laughs> Dude, I freaking love JK Simmons as J. Jonah James. And it's, 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 a, it's like he was born to, to play that. I'm just glad that he's back. Like, yeah. oh, here, but here's, a, here's the thing. Do you think that's the same J. Jonah Jameson from the, from the other movies? Or do you think that. Or, or Now, I think that with this whole multiverse thing that Loki did, I think that it is because they're also going to be getting Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. So maybe those two things that seem completely not connected are, in fact, connected. Who, again, who knows? I mean, who knows? Maybe, that's my. That's my. That's just a maybe theory. Maybe they just, just want to replace J.K. Simmons as J. I can. I can understand that, but but that would definitely be a, a genius retcon, and you can have that one. Disney. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, <laughs> although I will say, did you know that Stan Lee originally wanted to be the guy to play uh, J. J. Jonah Jameson when for the first like well, before those like ever yeah. any Spider-Man movie? But yeah, but then he realized you know by the time they got to enough. that one. By the time they got to the, you know, they're making the first one. It's like, yeah, I'm probably too old. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm old enough to be J. J. Jonah Jameson's grandpa. <laughs> oh man! But the, then he, but he, but then he later on said, like, J.K. Simmons, Simmons played the role oh, better yeah. than I he, ever he nailed could. It. He nailed it, dude. He, yeah, he, he was. He was Jameson. so funny. And it's I'm like just, it's it's like trying to replace Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Like you could do it, but I mean, it might, you know, it's just, uh, what was it? I think it was like. um... Uh, Mr. Jameson, your wife said she was in a car accident. Thanks for the good news. Thanks for the good news. Actually, I don't know if it was a car accident or whatever, or, or I don't know what it was, but it was something bad involving his wife. He said, thanks for the good news. It's just like, I, I just love, I just love him so much. Regardless, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, but speaking of Marvel, uh, the Emmy nominations came in. And there's and we have there's a bunch of cool okay th- yeah the Emmy nominations came in uh, the primetime Emmy awards and whatnot and uh, there were a few that were worth noting like for example uh, I should say Loki is not nominated for any of these because um, technically that will qualify for next year's Emmys oh uh, okay I see. yeah uh, but but uh, here's here are some surprising things like for example uh, WandaVision... Apparently has crushed it at the Emmys right now because, 
Uh, it has 23 nominations, including some of the high, some of the top tier categories, including what was it? Uh, what was it? Outstanding directing for a limited or anthology series or movie. Uh, outstanding lead actor in a limited series, anthology series or movie, uh, Paul Bettany. Outstanding lead actress in a limited or anthology series or movie, uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Outstanding supporting actress in a limited or anthology series or movie with Katherine Hahn. And outstanding limited or anthology series. That is the Emmys. Of that is, Wow. Like again, that's just like a few. Dude, like, you you were saying killed it, and I thought I thought I was like, yeah, it's, just, it's gonna get like three or four. It's got twenty. I was like, Whoa, that's, that is. I think it's like it's like a literal paragraph of nomination. I mean, yeah, that's here's the thing. Wonder Vision got the second most nominations out of any programming this year. Like holy shit! Yeah, a couple snikies. of them. A couple of them have tied for number one, and we'll discuss that here in a bit. Okay, but. One of us got number two, uh, which makes me a little bit uh, sad that Falcon Winter Soldier only got five. Yeah, I mean, that's, still, that's still pretty good, but that's definitely not, you know, to what, 23 you said? Yeah, because like, because all the, I mean, for me, I liked Falcon Winter Soldier more than One Division personally. See, for for me, I, I agreed with you earlier, but that was kind of the lexical slip on my part. I I would have switched around One Division and um. Captain America and Winter Soldier. I I, I really like Cap. It, it not depends, Captain it depends on Falcon the and Winter Soldier. I guess it kind of depends on the categories that you're swapping yeah. them for. Because I think for like production design and and costume design, I think I noticed that more in Wa or cinematography. I noticed that more in Wandavision. Yeah. Considering they had to get a little bit more creative. Okay. With that. Yeah. But, yeah. That's fair. But even then, with like I, I thought I, again overall, I liked Falcon Winter Soldier more. Like for example. Uh, here are some of the nominations it got. It got uh, Don Cheadle got outstanding guest actor in a drama series, which is weird because he only had, like less than two minutes, of, like around two minutes of screen time, which is kind of funny. Or was it three minutes? I don't know. Outstanding sound editing for a comedy or drama series, one hour. Outstanding visual, outstanding special visual effects in a season or a movie. Outstanding stunt coordination and outstanding stunt performance. Wow. I think out of any of these, I would definitely say stunt coordination is... Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. The the fight, dude, the fight scenes and the stunts in that show were excellent. Although, I don't think it's going to win visual effects, because that, that's going to go to Mandalorian. I, I agree. I'd have to, <laughs> sadly, I'd have to agree that they really kind of... Disney really kind of blew the money lo money mother load they're on... They're blowing, they're blowing their money load on all, on these, all shows. Of these shows. But, yes, yeah, but you can really see it with the Mandalorian. Like, yeah, it has some actual, like borderline theatrical level of, of yeah, VFX. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would almost say that it was better that the visual effects in The Mandalorian were better than a lot of the movies that came out in 2020. Yeah, dude, especially especially with the Luke Skywalker thing. Well, dude, that was... Well, they don't know what happened. Fuck me. Edit it out. Put up the wait, spoiler. Oh, oh, wait, good. Uh, oh good. no, fuck, good. fuck. Good, it's still up. It's still up. Look, it's still up. It's uh, still up. Uh, no, I should have... I should. Oh, no. It's still up. I should... No! <laughs> Oh, 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 fuck. I accidentally put your... I actually... Oh, oh. I, I, I unmuted your mic. Oh, damn it. I'm so... Damn it. It's okay. We can just put... Um, we can just put a... I'll, I'll, I guess I'll actually have to put a timestamp in the thing. You time. didn't do it last time. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's just, uh, I guess I'll actually have to do it this time. Yeah, I, I really... I really... Uh, that wasn't very poggers of me. Well, it wasn't very poggers of me. At least it was still there. I mean, I... Regard... Ah, oh, damn it! Well, granted, like whatever, like like if you like, sorry, people, I'm a, I'm a big idiot, uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, um, Falcon Winter Soldier. I, personally, I thought it deserved more Emmy recognition. I, I I would agree with that. Um, but you know, uh, still like WandaVision really kind of it, it wowed me, dude. Like Twenty three, the <laughs> second <laughs> most nominations out of anything this year. That's insane, dude. Although you know what. Did get the the most enemy nominations. It was tied for two, which each of these had twenty four. One of them is uh, the Crown. The Crown got uh, twenty four. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of the Crown. I haven't myself uh, seen it. But I guess it was apparently playing uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth II in the newest uh, season of the Crown coming up. Tom Cruise. No, the Tom same Cruise. actress who played uh, Dolores Umbridge in Harry Potter. She's gonna be playing. Oh, oh yeah, you know yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good pick. Oh, but here's the thing: everyone on Twitter was just saying, "Oh, oh no, uh, it's f like, not crit, not not towards her as an actress, but it's like people are like, oh no, Dolores Umbridge is back.' Yeah, because <laughs> like, God know, save the queen, isn't it? 
Uh, oh, it's just because Dolores Umbridge is probably one of the one, one of probably, the most hated characters in Harry Potter. Although she's probably, I don't so that's, know, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah thing. the good kind of hate, not yeah, the Mary Jane not, Watson not the, kind of hate. Not the not the all oh, the terrible performance. No, such a good performance no, that no, you I, legitimately you know, I mean, start you know, to feel some vitriol. No, even though no, what my problem with with Mary Jane Watson wasn't even is uh, she was written to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Kirsten Dunst. I didn't I had no problem with her. No, no, no. But yeah, the writing the writing was pretty bad, and most of her lines were just. But but with but with Dolores Umbridge, you're supposed to hate yeah, her. Yeah, you're you're, to hate. you're really I don't, I, I, I was gonna say I think she's a better villain than like I, I, don't get me wrong. I really do like Voldemort, but Dolores Umbridge is so it's she's almost like she's almost like Leonardo DiCaprio from Django and Chain. How lovably despicable she is, and yeah. like how she just enjoys being so mm-hmm. mean towards everyone. She she made fucking uh, see, she here's... made Snape feel bad. She made Snape just go. Mm. Like, see, here's here's what I'm. Here's how I like to, to look at it. Like, Snape, or not Snape, Voldemort, you you are sort of put off by him physically because of what he looks like. With Dolores Umbridge, she's like, it's it's her, she she looks fine. She doesn't look like an evil, uh, uh, terrible human being, but she, she is. She she acts like it. She, she has she a smile on her face. acts like it and, and personifies just the, she's the complete antithesis of, of a nice lady, which is 100% what she looks like. Which I think adds to her because you know it's it's kind of like a a, a a Venus flytrap. Yeah, it's just a flower, but no, it's it's really a, a trap. She's it's a, a trap, she's a bitch. and and she's she's gonna tear you up. Yeah, and the worst part is like she's not even physically intimidating. She's no, she'll yeah, just hurt you with saying. her words. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She'll use she'll her words. Mean she's, 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 I was about to say she'll do it with her she'll, mouth. She'll just yeah, she'll just but bully. that would sound inappropriate. <laughs> oh god, oh. <laughs> She just bully you. She bullied Snape and made him feel bad. Yeah, she, really... she broke Snape, man. She broke Snape. Like that, that takes, she, that she, takes some she's effort. She's just a bully. <laughs> yeah, but regardless, yeah, the Crown ha- ties with another show for the most nominations with uh, with twenty four. Can you guess what the what the other one is? The I'm... the Mandalorian. Yep, the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, the Mandalorian also got. Uh, 24 nominations, including for the second year in a row, Outstanding Drama Series. Oh, yeah. Which, for the Emmys... Dude, the like, writing in that show is fantastic. Oh, yeah, the writing. But it's like, but it's like, for the Emmys, that's like the Emmys equivalent, like, like for being, like, being nominated for, like, like the, you know, dra- like, Outstanding Drama Series, Outstanding Comedy Series, or Outstanding Limited Series, that's like the Emmys equivalent of the Oscars. Yeah, that's like, that's like getting nominated for Best Picture two times in a row, even though you're only one movie. Yeah, or... Or one show. Yeah. Or, or actually, a bit. But regardless, The Mandalorian getting nominated for the second year in a row for Outstanding Drama Series. It's not going to win. That's crazy. That's crazy, though. Yeah. Like, obviously, it's not going to win. I think it's probably... Actually, wait. What? Um, I almost kind of want to... Hold on. Okay. I mean, I want to look up the... I actually do want to look up the Emmy nominations. Um, yeah, I can do it on my phone real quick. Uh, they're actually... like The thing is, I'm looking for oh, the... Oh, I um, can text it to you on Discord. Uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm the thing is, I'm actually trying to look for the um for the uh, actual ballot. I'm not the ballot, but yeah, it's no, like, I can text you. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah, text download, you the website to the yeah, yeah downloads um complete nominations list. Here we go. Yeah, like let's look at uh, what's nominated for outstanding drama series. We'll probably yeah, we could probably outstanding wait outstanding. Uh, wait, hold on. Where is drama series? Uh, like there's, there's a lot. Like there's a lot of fucking categories. Uh, wait, cinematography. Wait. Uh, oh, like costumes. Uh, sorry that we're being quiet right now because we're we're looking, we're using that human. Evolved hunter vision to try to find a word against a solid background. Yeah. Uh. Where? Like, maybe it's closer to around here? Maybe? Uh. Actually, actually, I'll, I'll, I got an idea. I'll probably. Oop. Yeah, if you can. Or, well, if you can copy the word drama. Actually, not even that. It's like, I, I think I got an idea. I could probably just go to the. Site itself and just, you know, uh, yeah, awards, nominees, winners, and whatnot. 
Yeah, out, like, outstanding comedy series. We have Blackish, Cobra Kai, Emily in Paris, Hacks, Pen15, Ted Lasso, The Flight Attendant, and The Kaminsky Method. I've seen Cobra Kai. And drama series. Here's what's nominated for... Actually, actually before that, I'll go for limited or anthology series. Let's do that first. Um, I May Destroy You, The Mayor of Easttown, The Queen's Gambit, The Underground Railroad, and WandaVision. Mm, that's a tough pick for me between The Queen's Gambit and WandaVision. I really like The Queen's Gambit. That one was... I mm, haven't. Yeah, I, that series was really good. I haven't, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, so I can't really say. But yeah. uh, there's it's, it's it's on Netflix, I think. Um, yeah. So you should uh, check it out if you get the chance. I think it's either going to be the Queen's Game or the Mayor of Easttown because like people are yeah. saying that that's like uh, people are actually saying that that's Kate Winslet's best performance. Period. In um in uh. The thing is, there's also I yeah. may destroy you. So like yeah. that's being kind of popular. Uh, but still, that's and here's drama series. There's one of them surprised me that got on there. Uh, here's I was saying drama series, Bridgerton, Lovecraft Country, Pose, The Boys, The Crown, The Handmaid's Tale, The Mandalorian, and This Is Us. The, yeah, boys, is the boys shocked me. That yeah, was the, good. the Boys is so good. I've not seen The Boys, although granted, this is probably I actually might want to try and watch this. And also, there's Lovecraft Country. Yeah, and I need to watch out of those. I need to watch Lovecraft Country, uh, The Crown, and um, I haven't seen Pose or Bridgerton. Have you seen This Is Us? No, I don't think I've seen that either. So, so I, I, need to check, I need to check pretty much everything except for The Boys, Handmaid's I, Tale, and The Mandalorian. I've again, seen. again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch up on a whole lot of these. But The, the Handmaid's Tale is going to be a hard one. The thing is like three, I think it's going on its either third or fourth season at this point. I, I don't, again, I don't know, but it's like, The Boys, I might check that. Well, I was actually kind of surprised it was nominated for drama. Although, Grant, mm-hmm. would you, although, Grant, you've actually seen it. Would you say it's more comedy or drama? Uh, I'd, I'd say it's got, a, it's got a balance of both. I could see, I could see how you uh, could. You could probably see it getting yeah, like, I, I could, yeah, like, it's, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't really stick to one of those enough for me to classify it into either. There, there's a fair bit of, like, character drama and stuff, and, and stuff between so, so, characters, but there's also a lot of. It's so, so, so it's all like Black Clansman. Yeah, like, yeah, it could yeah. go either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I, I do want to try to check out the boys because appara- even then apparently they like apparently season two was released week by week. So yeah. that does give me a little bit because it does give me a little bit more time. Yeah. yeah, and whatnot. So it's like all right. Uh, but the Mandalorian getting nominated for the second year in a row uh, for be- for outstanding drama is a huge significant thing for Star Wars. Um, let's see. I want like. I guess we might as well look at like look at the main categories for like outstanding reality or competition program. Sure. Uh, let's try this. Um, I bet RuPaul's Drag Race is on there. Wait. Oh no, that's outstanding host. Sorry. Oopsies. Whoopsies. Uh. Oh wait, there's three. There's three categories: there's structured, unstructured, competition. All right. Uh. Oop. Okay, here's I was saying structure reality program antique roadshow property brothers uh, forever home queer eye fi uh, running wild with bear grills and Shark Tank, uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, anything stick out to you there? I, I know what Shark Tank is. Um, I do know that Mr. Wonderful is kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, he's a real piece of shit and kind of a scammer himself. I mean, like like not even like he's one of, he's like he's like one of the rich people that doesn't that doesn't really care about the poor and whatnot. He's kind of, he just like I mean I don't think a lot of them. I mean I, I, I think Mark Cuban. Cu- I think from what I've heard, Mark Cuban. Mark, Mark Cuban's a pretty. It's, it's cool. I've heard I haven't heard cool. any controversial thing. I've, I've heard that he's at least like a he at least, incredible dude. Yeah. Uh, they're outstanding unstructured reality program. Disney's becoming, which is I think that's Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Below deck, Indian matchmaking. RuPaul's Drag Race. Hey, I called and, it. And selling such. I've not seen RuPaul's Drag Race. I haven't seen it either. I just know what it is. My friend Mike. It's like the. It. it is like the. It's like one of the big things right now. Yeah, my friend Mike and his girlfriend like to watch it. Hmm. Uh, and there's uh, outstanding competition program. Nailed it. RuPaul's Drag Race. The Amazing Race. The Voice and uh, Top Chef. Uh, again, I've seen none of these. Top chef. Does that is that the one with Gordon Ramsay? I, I finally mean, some good fucking food. I mean, Gra- he has so many. Gordon Ramsay has so many shows. He's a like, powerhouse. He's like Guy Fieri almost. Guy, I think it's pronounced <laughs> Guy Fieri. Yeah, I think I've I've heard him pronounce it that way. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, uh, let's see, short form comedy or drama or variety series. Let's see what this I li- is. I like both of those boys, though. They, every time I watch their shows, I get so hungry. <laughs> and then I'm like, I can't even make these things. Why am I thinking about this? Who we? Uh, outside think short form comedy drama or variety series, uh, car- Carpool Karaoke, Light Night with Seth Meyers Corrections, Rio 911, Tuning Out the News, and The Randy Rainbow Show. 
I haven't seen. I know what Reno Nine One One is. I've seen a couple of Randy Rainbow stuff. I haven't. Uh, he he like does like he does sort of like parodies of songs, but with a political context. Like for example, uh, those like um like it's, he especially made a lot during the Donald Trump era, which. Yeah, um, some of them are pretty funny. Although the one thing I will say is that I don't know, he was kind of quiet with his singing, and so like, uh, regardless, uh, yeah. Um, then there's, I was saying, short form nonfiction or comedy, uh, non nonfiction reality series, pandemic video diaries, vaxxed and waxed, inside Pixar pose. Uh, well, I guess it must be like a pose thing. There's for a, like, yet another. There's a top. There's yet another Top Chef show. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, what was it? Animated, animated program, they have, let's see what they have for animated program, they have Big Mouth, Bob's Burgers, Primal, South Park Pandemic Special, and The Simpsons. I need to catch up on South Park again. I really like Bob's Burgers too. Big Mouth, I'm not that big of a fan of. Um, I, I, I've never seen it, but the designs just throw me off so much, like, ah. It's, it's not only that, it's that too, and I don't, I don't want to sound like some filthy intellectual or something but the the humor is just super low brow and i i don't think it's that funny like south south park isn't exactly like apex humor either but, but it's the, at least the, relevant and, and it's kind of like you know engaging again i can't say anything about big mouth so yeah, yeah. i haven't seen primal it's like getting tartakovsky yeah. thing i haven't seen that either uh but yeah i've seen the pandemic special for south park and it, it was it was really funny yeah. i haven't yeah. i haven't I'm excited for that I, there's this there's a there's a sort of a sequel to that called the vaccination special except vaccination uh, is, is, is also apparently makes fun of QAnon or something. Oh, which, dude, yeah, which, QAnon the the secret uh, the I secret mole in the White House leaking the truth out to all of us uh, Alex don't, 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 Jones don't, watchers don't, out there. Don't, basic, look, don't don't listen to to QAnon the, or Alex garbage. Jones. Yeah, they're both. It's like poison for your brain. Yeah, they really It'll are. just kill you slowly. They they really are. Oh, uh, um, I'm trying to think of oh, a hundred percent of people that have died have thought about Alex Jones at least once. Maybe not Abraham Lincoln. Definitely Abraham Lincoln. That's why he died. Oh dang. Uh, oh yeah. A special here's best best uh, visual effects in a season or a movie. Lovecraft Country, The Boys, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Mandalorian, and WandaVision. Mandalorian's taking this easy. Oh yeah. Um, I think I think so. Uh. So yeah. Um. But I will say another one that that I can just really just bring up right here is that um uh Hamilton got quite a few nominations too, uh and, and Hamilton also like it, it mainly got like because like it couldn't qualify for the Oscars mm -hmm. uh uh but it did qualify for the Emmys and it got nominated for Outstanding Variety Special pre recorded oh, that's cool yeah. Uh, and also, like for lead actor in a in a limited anthology series or movie, both Lin Manuel Miranda and um, fuck, what's his name? Uh, the other guy, like Aaron Burr. Fuck. Oh, yeah. What's his yeah, name? Yeah, and, the and I know what you're. Who Leslie you're Odom Jr. About? Leslie Odom Jr. Yeah. I think like and a lot of the other actors got nominations too, including uh, Renice. Uh, like actually, who, who was the girl who played um. Uh, the one who sang "Satisfied," the black I really, woman. I really wish you wouldn't be asking me. I'm horrid with with actor and actress names. Oh, uh, I think Anthony Ramos got nominated for a supporting actor for mm. for something like this. But regardless, like I love Hamilton was my number one movie of last year. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I love the hell. Currently, it's still my favorite movie of the 2020s decade. Although, granted, we're not even two years in, so it's like. Yeah, but you know, what are your thoughts on Hamilton getting? Uh, uh, I, I think it deserves it for sure. I think I thought Hamilton is. I think Hamilton is great. I, it's got a lot of a great and terrific music. B, it's fun to watch and and C, yeah, it definitely deserves some love yeah, from the Emmys. Like it's it's funny. It's heartbreaking at times. Like I am actually, and, and even for how whole, how old the subject matter of the the musical itself is, it's still very relevant. Oh yeah, definitely. Um and, I, and yeah, like this. It, it is a phenomenal move. It yeah, is a phenomenal and I think that speaks volumes about it, honestly. Just how relevant it can be, even though it's technically set like two hundred years ago. And it has a rapping because who would have thought that rapping Alexander Hamilton? Yeah, who'd have thought? Would, like would have been like that significant? Not Alexander Hamilton himself, probably. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, I don't know, like, like, I don't know, but uh, my my brain's just going in a bunch of different directions. But it's like, regardless, I loved Hamilton. Thought it was great. Um, Handmaid's Tale got a bunch of nominations too. Yeah, well, d deservedly. So I've, I'm, I'm not fully caught up with it yet. But what I have seen of Handmaid's Tale, I really like. I've seen up to season two, I believe. 
Ooh. And it's a crazy, it's a crazy show. It's a Disney show now. Yeah. Do you know what the premise of that show is? Yeah, you told me. Yeah. It's, it sounds depressing it's as hell. It's depressing as crap, dog. It's like, I mean, it's okay. So it's, it's depressing, but uplifting because if you think about it, it starts off at a, in a pretty shit position. So the only way to go from there is up <laughs> and, and it does, but also the only way to go from up is down and it goes down way down. And it's uh yeah, it's, it's a great show. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I do. I do want to try to watch some of these. Like I do, I, I will probably try to watch the boys at some point. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I do want to try to watch Lovecraft country. Me, me too. We should, maybe we should do that together. Although I will say, you know, I'm surprised keeps getting snubbed out of the, out of the Emmys. His Dark Materials. Yeah, you know, I was actually kind of surprised of you, you, did, you did, not did, mentioning did, that. Yeah, did you did you see His Dark Materials? I have, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard like oh, amazing dude, things you, about it. You yeah, need to see it. Like the weird thing is, last year it didn't get nominated for outstanding visual effects in a series, even though I'd argue, aside from The Mandalorian, it has like really maybe, good VFX. Like probably the maybe some of the like. Again, aside from the man, yeah, Mandalorian I think has the best visual effects I've ever seen in a series. Yes, yeah, his dark materials I think would be number two because holy shit, you need to see the bear in this thing. Like, because obviously you know if you've seen the Golden Compass, yeah. you know there's a polar bear. Yeah. Oh my god, hold on. His dark materials. Ah uh, shit, what's his name? Uh. Yorick Bernison. Yeah, this is from a TV show. Yeah, goddamn. It is the most photo re- It almost and looks like a real bear. It looks... It is the best looking bear I've ever seen in my life. And that's saying a lot because the Revenant had a pretty sweet bear. Pretty and sweet also, bear, yeah. yeah. And also, you know, uh, what was it called? The, the Jungle Book had a great yep. bear with blue. But... The his Jungle Book had a great everything, honestly. The big snake. Yeah. His dark the ma- Gigantopithecus. But his, his Dark Materials has the best CGI bear I've ever seen in my life. It looks so real. They even get down like the like the mud clumps and its fur and whatnot. Cause like you know the, like the fur isn't completely clean and whatnot. And mm-hmm. you know how with animals like you know their fur will clump when there's yeah, mud. Yeah. They nail that perfect. Like the That's jiggling cool. of the muscles and whatnot. No, I think you're wrong. I think um, the monsters at work has the best fur. Oh God, don't effects. look! I I really like monsters at work. I'm I, really, I do too. But the the at least I'm not noticing as much now. Yeah. Like it just it's just that first episode. That first episode, he was really my man was looking rough. He was looking like you you, Pe- you turn to your you, mom. You can see the pictures. You turn to your mom and you say, "Mom, I want Sully," and she looks at you and says, "We have Sully at home." <clears throat> and and Sully at home be like episode oh. one Sully. <laughs> or it's like or it's like uh, oh boy, but yeah. But I'm surprised his art material is not getting all that. It got no Emmy nominations, none, which is weird. Even for some like the very because some of these categories are so technologically niche, like single-handed cinematography right. for drama. Yeah. Like it's like or even I'm not I'm not saying it should have gotten that nomination specifically. I'm just I'm just bum, bumbling at random things. But it's like I'm surprised it's got nothing, not even visual effects. And this is like a category where it was pr- like like. Uh, I don't know. It's it's saddening. I because I, re, I really like this show. Um, and to, like again, some of the stars that got in that show, like they got Daphne Keene. Yeah, even just... though uh, even though I'm not even though I don't think Lin Manuel Miranda was the right choice for this show. I mean, they got they they managed to get him for it, and they got James McAvoy. Uh, it's just. I'm serious. You really got to check yeah. it out. It's so good. Although, granted, I haven't seen the go- the original Golden Compass movie in a long time. There's just same. This... I probably haven't seen it since I was a kid. Same. Yeah, there's just like this one part that me and Alex always joke about, where it's like, you're like, because when we saw we saw it when we were kids, and uh, there was like one part that was so shockingly dark. I was like. What? Where like the bears are fighting? He's like, "Is that all?" And he goes, "Is that all?" And then the other bear smacks his jaw off. Yeah. And it's like, and just falls down the ground. Like, what the? F-? Like, it's, it's so horrifyingly dark. And like, me, especially me, as a child. And like me and Alex, Alex now just always make that joke. Like, is that all? Yeah. It's just, which, which, funny enough, I mean, you know, Grant, one day you're gonna say that to her, and she's gonna smack your jaw right off. The, the, I mean, yeah, uh, but I will say, funny enough, and Grant, I can't since it. I mean, the first season covers the hit, covers the Golden Compass, so it's not really a spoiler for his Dark Materials because right. 
the the when that fight happens, funny if they actually sort of hide like like the when the girl like the girl looks away and like they're sort of blurred in the background like like for, not blood not by censoring but like camera focusing blurred, yeah. and it's like. And fun, so it's funny that the t- that the TV show wasn't as graphic as the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I think, funny, if I think the movie won Best Visual Effects at the Oscars that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, I think you're actually it, right about that. It, it beat Transformers and Pirates of the Caribbean 3, which I don't know if I would have put it above those two, but still, it had really great effects. But regardless... Yeah, that's that would also be a really hard one for me. Like, And then the weird thing is that like, none of those movies, except maybe to some degree... Pirates of the Caribbean, but a very minor one. None of those movies I would be inclined to pick because I, I like, actually like the everything else that wasn't the VFX. I thought Transformers was pretty poorly written. Same with... I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I actually really liked uh, tra- that first that first Transformers movie. I really liked that it, first Transformers it, it was, movie. It was definitely, I think, the, like, the best out of all of them. Maybe but, except for Bumblebee. Yeah, but... The, yeah, but... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure, except for Bumblebee. But but even then, I thought it was pretty weak sauce. I, I just I, just, I don't know. For me, for me, well, that Transformers movie, like the go with it. At least again, this is just me. Uh, for me, it like the the problem with the sequels is that the oh, grant I've only seen Transformer. Like I've only seen three Transformers movies: Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, and Bumblebee. Uh, and yeah, like, I've sadly seen too many of. Them. I've seen <laughs> Transformers. I've seen Transformers: Dark of the Moon. I've seen Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. I saw the one with Mark Wahlberg. Which one? There were the, two. The the dinosaur. They both had dinosaurs. I know, but the for the first one. Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction, and then I haven't seen the one after the that. last night. The last night with I haven't Anthony seen. Hopkins. Actually, no, no, yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't seen the last night. So, um, but but I didn't. They were freaking garbage. They were they. Those are movies I would probably. If if not for the visual effects, award zero stars because they really are boring. I like uh, for me like again like for me with the uh, Grant I haven't seen the, any other ones but no matter how bad they get I mean I mean Michael Bay knows how to do yeah, visual he, effects he does, he, sure he, they're but, like, always top not, but regardless like you know um uh, oh yeah we were going on a tangent over uh over his art materials in the Golden Compass but like yeah. but yeah you really gotta watch the Golden Compass and I gotta say I wasn't so sure if Daphne Keene was gonna be able to hold her own in a show because great she was great in Logan but yeah. she played a supporting role that didn't have a lot of lines so oh, it's yeah, like yeah. I wasn't so sure how she was gonna fare she can she can she can be a leading star like she's really good like she's really good um and I gotta say guess who directed the first episode of his dark materials. Tom Hooper, the same guy who directed the King's Speech, yeah. Les Mis Rob, mm-hmm. and Cats. Tom Hooper and Cats, <laughs> which makes me even question how Cats got so bad to begin with. Because all of, like I've, he also directed the Danish Girl, which I haven't seen, but I really do want to see. I mean, it's, it's possible that it was rushed. Who knows? I think it's just just not a good source material to adapt into a film. Yeah, that that too. Like I don't know. Like I don't know if you've have you seen the stage production for Cats. I, all I've known is that is that it's pretty much like the movie. It's just, it's, it's just it's character introductions. Just, yeah, that's it. Just the only the character. Thing. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That. that was, yeah. But regardless, but, you know, it, it it works on stage. It does. I, I've seen Cats on stage, and I thought that it. When you, I guess it's really down to whether or not the actors do a good job. And, I don't and know if it's really directed. the actors because like I didn't have the I have I didn't have a problem with the performances. In no, the, no, no, in the no, 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 no. Same. That's not Espe- that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm talking about like when it comes to like the the stage showing because the stage showing is definitely not as painful to watch as, as it being. I think the the biggest thing with the film I think adaptation really, like, is the the special effects. Actually, it's not it's not even that because I can for me I think I'm not saying all the effects are are good. Like I, I thought the mice and the cockroaches looked horrible, I th- but I do think the cats sometimes looked pretty good. Again, for me the problem is just like it's just, if it works on stage great but at the same time like because like when you're on stage when it's a stage you get the full experience like you yeah. see mm-hmm. it's just, you're seeing everything in person yep you're watching this on a screen and it's like even then with the with the musical people it's kind of take or leave it with people yep. but with a movie it's gonna come across a lot more awkwardly considering it's a movie now yeah and, and especially like with movies you kind of you can't you, you can't waste expert, your t- there's yeah. more of an expectation for yeah. a plot and, and yeah that's what I'm saying something has to happen you can't just spend your entire movie saying oh this is who this is and this is what they do and now we're going to sing s- about it for four minutes because I swear to god when I, when I watched Cats for the first time I was like man the beginning of this movie is long like, yeah same and that, and that was like wait 
It's 30 minutes? Like, like this has been 30 minutes so far? Because I thought the movie... I thought they were still trying to do the beginning. And then, and, then, and then they get, like, to the end of the movie, and they introduce Mr. Mistopheles or whatever again. I'll never forget when we, watched, when, we watched, when we watched Cats for the first time, and you fucking flipped your shit over the fact that Gus the theater cat... The, 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 Gus, the only one whose name is somewhat normal, his name turned out to be Asparagus. Asparagus. You, fl- you flipped your shit over yeah, that. Yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> like, asparagus. You're just like, why is his name Asparagus? Why? <laughs> That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like you were losing your show. Like, oh my god. Yeah, the cats is cats is painful. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'd say, quite say painful because again, there's a few good things I, I I did legitimately like in that movie, especially Jennifer Hudson, uh, Qu- Queen Hudson, all the way, baby. Like she was amazing. But regardless, I keep we keep going on a tangent. But like his dark materials, watch it. It's great. Shock that hasn't gotten any Emmy nominations. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's it's great. Uh, there's a bunch of other things right here, but, you know, for example, last week tonight, John Oliver got a lot of nominations. I That's ex- good. Yeah. I expect it to win Outstanding t- Variety Talk Series because he's kind of been sweeping that category for a, for yeah. for years now. But, yeah, I we really need to uh, move on to the next subject because there's um there's a lot of topics we need to get through next. But regardless, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, here's an interesting one. Apparently, Taika Waititi is going to be directing and writing... Uh, a li- a live action Flash Gordon movie. <coughs> yeah, you know I actually uh, actually thoroughly enjoy Flash Gordon. I've never seen Flash Gordon in my life. It's uh, I, it's, I, it's I will say, <coughs> I will say it's aged. But no, he, I, here's the th- here's the funny thing. Like I actually read, like it actually has really good reviews on Rotten. The soundtrack Tomatoes. slaps. Oh, here's the thing. The soundtrack. I, it absolutely was not. It was slaps. not until yesterday. Which okay, Grant. Oh man, I almost want to try and get a drink, but I don't want to risk the uh, the um. Okay, I will. Uh, hold on, you you go on your little thing right there. I'm going to try to get. Just don't step on anything. Okay, yeah. Talk about Flash Gordon. And... Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, the the soundtrack is completely done by Queen, one of my favorite rock bands ever. My favorite band. Really. Honestly, yeah, really. Like, I, I can, I can respect that. They, they, they slap, and I have, I have quite a few of their albums on vinyl. I have a night at the opera, jazz. I, I definitely need to see if I can get the Flash Gordon soundtrack on vinyl because it's, it's actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but the movie Bohemian Rhapsody oh, yeah. made me a Queen fan. Yeah, no, yeah, I can understand that for sure. But, but yeah, but yeah, here's the thing. Uh, it wasn't until yesterday when I finally listened to the to the Flash song, like Flash, Flash. Gordon. Oh my universe. god! Even though, granted, there's not a whole lot of lyrics in that. Yeah. It's mostly it, it just kicks talking. ass, dude. Oh my god, the, the parts that do have singing, it's like, oh my, it's god. so good. I gotta mm-hmm. say, maybe that's what. Maybe when you say it's aged, maybe visually, maybe that's because yeah. they spent most of their budget. Dude, on yeah, Queen. dude, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and it was also made in like the mid 70s, but it's it, it's it's a great movie. I I really 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 enjoy it. I enjoy it so much that I that I'm pretty sure that's like one of the first movies. I, I made Stephanie watch with me. I was like, "Have you ever seen Flash Gordon?" Oh my, she was like, but "No." Still, but the fact that, that, that them getting Queen to mm-hmm. do that, that would be like that, for like the silly little like this little B movie and whatnot. Yep. Like that'd be like trying to get like I don't know, uh, Grant. I don't know who. That's like trying It'd be like trying to get freaking um like who's like the biggest band in the world right now? I don't know BTS. Yeah, like, it'd be trying to get like BTS to make mu- music for your for your YouTube video that three people are gonna see. Like like well, like. But the fact that they actually got but, but they did it. The fact that they actually got Queen. yeah. Oh my! But yeah, Taika Waititi is going to be rebooting Flash Gordon. And that makes me happy. I mean, it's I'm sad because it's definitely not going to have a soundtrack. Between. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I think if I'm not mistaken, Taika Waititi said that if Freddie Mercury were alive, he would have had them do the soundtrack for Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, so I, I, dude, I bet. I, look, I'm, I'm I'm just going to call it right now. You're probably going to hear that Flash Gordon theme oh, song dude, in this I, I movie. I hope so. I hope so. That would make, that make me kind of really happy. Wouldn't it be amazing if they actually got Queen and Adam Lambert to do the to do like a new rendition dude, of this? Dude, that actually would be fire. The only thing they would obviously be missing is John Deacon, but he doesn't play anymore. So, yeah, but I mean, even then, like you know, because like Queen still tours with yeah, Adam with Lambert. Adam Lambert, I, say, yeah. Adam I, I, Lambert I want to see them. I love Adam Lambert. Adam yeah, Lambert, he's he, good. He's, he's, not, good. he's not Freddie. Like, no one can be Freddie Mercury, but damn it, damn, damn did they get close? Yeah, mm-hmm. he like. Oh, um, I would actually die There's if they got. Something to believe because like I remember, like I, I first became aware of Queen and Adam Lambert when they performed at the Oscars that one. Oh yeah, year. yeah. Oh like, oh my God, this is so great. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, I would absolutely be. I would be. 
I would die if they got Queen and Adam Lambert to do a new to do, like do a, a new revamp. Yeah, a, a like re- like a like a yeah a re a cover. Because like you that would be know, amazing. Because if if Taika Waititi is really that big of a Queen fan, like you know he would do this. Like, this Dude, would of be course. Weird. But that like would the, that would be the move. What are, like what are your thoughts on the idea of Taika Waititi tackling Fra- Flash? I think they I think they picked the fir- the perfect person to do it. I think that if anybody's gonna do it, it should be Taika Waititi. Yeah, like cause especially like, hearing how big of a fan of Queenie is, of course it should be Taika Waititi. He's he understood the whole point of the of of Flash Gordon. Yeah, because it was it was originally gonna be animated, but it's gonna be now live action. Which, granted, I think I think that works better for it. Yeah, especially I mean, because of like what the source material is. I mean, plus like we, like you know, um, what's the like how do I describe it? It's like. I kind of like to see this stuff kind of come to life in yeah. live action and whatnot, which, uh, yeah. And the and plus, I mean, Thor Ragnarok was already kind of like Flash Gordon. Yeah, right? for Granted, sure. I, have, I haven't seen Flash Gordon, but it's like I've seen, like, I've seen, like, you know, um, what was it? Like, Ted did a whole thing. Yeah, with, with Flash Gordon. Gordon. And they actually got the original. the TV on my penis. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, the idea of, of Taika Waititi doing Flash Gordon, seeing what he did with Thor Ragnarok, it's like, oh, man, ima- just imagine him redoing this for the modern age yeah. he's gonna make this look awesome and again i he, i don't i don't even like i'm pretty much guaranteeing that he's going to that he would absolutely have uh, either have that either have the original song in this movie or, or have or queen do, yeah do like a cover with adam lambert dude that would be freaking amazing that would be absolutely poggers yeah i just like again i have not seen flash gordon i should probably watch it at some point if you it's... watch it let me know i will definitely watch it with you it's one of my favorite movies ever yeah it's like, like well really mm-hmm. that that high yeah dude it's, it's probably a lot of it a lot of it has to be the soundtrack but i really really like it because again like I, I just I'm I'm right now still thinking about the, about the just that it's just it's like like the theme like when it comes to that theme it's just when it comes to that theme song it's just it's what one of them is a like one of the things like that you instantly recognize it's just one of them is a word and the other one is just a vowel yeah ah, ah, the, the just, guitar oh. is just so awesome dude it's Queen you know it's not to love I mean yeah Queen is again. Because of Bohemian Rhapsody, Queen is probably my favorite band. Did you know that they, on their album, A Night at the Opera, the very last song on it is God Save the Queen by Queen? <laughs> mm. That's that's great. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's awesome. I freaking, I freaking, I love owning it on vinyl for that because I always love when it when it comes on and people's like, wait, dun, 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 dun. I know this. And I was like, I present to you God Save the Queen by Queen. <laughs> I just like I I don't have much to say about this because I haven't seen Flash Gordon, but I just I just want Queen and Adam Lambert to come back and do this and 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 uh, at, le- at the very least. Bro, know, I hope that I hope they give a little cameo to the to the <laughs> old Flash Gordon actor. I mean, he's still around. I mean, who knows? Taika Waititi would probably do something. He's, like he's, that. he's, he's a crazy he's a man. He's an animal, dude. I love like, him. I lo- I've seen three of Taika of, Ta- of Taika's movies. I've seen What We Do in the Shadows, which yep. was great. Amazing. Thor Ragnarok was great, Amazing. and I, I and I. I thought, yeah, his. In my opinion, the best movie I've seen from him to date is Jojo Rabbit. Oh yeah, Jojo Rabbit was freaking awesome. Yeah, not only was it hilarious, but goddamn, that movie got dark. Heart, yeah, and yet somehow it didn't feel jarring like a Medea movie. It yeah. actually felt like it was so relevant in every single way. And it was about like this little boy who has an imaginary Hitler as a fr- as an imaginary <laughs> friend, and he's like this kid who wants to be a Nazi when he grows up. But then, but it's like the movie has such a great message about yeah. all, about you know about. I don't know. If you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, watch it. It's a Disney movie. I mean, it's, I mean now it is because it's Searchlight, but, you know. Uh, well, I mean, obviously it's a Disney movie. Hitler's in it. <laughs> oh, boy. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that was a joke. Disney is not anti-Semitic anymore. At least not. Yeah, not anymore. anymore. Yeah, I mean, Walt Disney Walt, himself. Walt Disney himself died an anti-Semite. That's for sure. Yeah. Although, I, although, although But I'm pretty sure the anti-Semitism died with him yeah because I, I think like once walt disney died that's when disney started going hardcore and trying to like trying to remove trying any... to sterilize their image so yeah, to like, speak. yeah. <clears throat> i think they're like ah, oh, this guy this guy is kind of a nazi that's not a good look well, that's why one of the reasons why we haven't <laughs> why they haven't released song of the south which i've still never seen song of the south although i'm not gonna lie the <laughs> song it Although I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've I have heard the song Zippity Doo. I'm not gonna lie, it's it, uh, I'm not gonna, like uh, I don't know what, what. Should we go to copyright land? I, I don't know if we need to go to copyright. Land. I'm not gonna play, but like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a I will say it's a catchy song. 
I mean, it's not really. I, mean, I haven't, haven't heard, heard it. No, I haven't heard it. Oh, you, oh man, you haven't heard that song? I mean, no. I mean, I don't think there's a, like. I think really like the more problems people have with the movies, like it kind of downplayed slavery and whatnot. Dude, of course. It was. But how? But I don't think that was. I don't think anyone had a problem with the song Zippity Doo Dah. Like I don't know. It's a, uh, maybe after. Maybe after. No, but you know, Disney. Disney came out of a, out of a dark hole. That's yeah. that's where they were born. But well, I, I will say that they they at least on that aspect they got better. But pretty soon in the podcast we're gonna see pretty quickly how they have still managed to screw some people over. Oh yeah. But regardless, yeah, Taika Waititi is directing a new Flash Gordon movie. I hope to God. Oh, they... I, I know what you mean by that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I heard about. I heard about that. Oh yeah. Uh, well, again, we'll discuss that. Here we'll we'll get to it. Yeah, but regardless, yeah, I again, I hope they bring Adam Lambert and Queen to do this. But regardless, yeah, our next topic is regarding Batgirl. They've apparently cast Leslie Grace from In the Heights. To play. Oh, uh, I was very afraid for a moment that you were about to talk to me about the WB or whatever CW Entertainment. No, this is the HBO. This is HBO Max. To, I, was to, I was about to be like, oh, this is no. HBO. This is HBO oh, Max. No. Oh, oh, that show is really my, my, bad. Oh, you might want to bring a little bit closer because <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. That, I was like, I hope we're not talking about CW. Batgirl. Yeah, the, yeah. This is that this is terrible. Yeah, no. This is for HBO Max, which is quality. It'll be it'll be quality written. Um, although I will say, uh, this is pretty interesting because like they actually had a few, they considered a few other actresses for the role, uh, for Bad Girl. Obviously, yeah, you know her from In the Heights. Yeah. But one of the ones that was considered for the role of, uh, at least one of the ones that was screen tested for uh, Bad Girl. Was Isabella Merced from uh, from Dora and the Lost City of Gold? Oh, although interesting. Grant, although they misspelled Isabella, it's supposed to be one L, but whatever. I don't Isabella. know why. That's, I don't. That's how you would pronounce that. Oh, the, uh, the double L make us uh, yeah oh, sound. Uh, is uh, per, is Peruvian Spanish the same thing as? Yeah, it's uh, it's Spanish. I mean, yeah, Grant. Uh, uh, the reason why I was asking is because like sort of like how American English is a little bit different from English. Yeah, no, English. I mean that exists in like. When you, when you get, the, the, but that really only apply, applies to like colloquialisms and like slang. Like a lot of the slang that's used in Mexican Spanish, for example, is probably not used in Peruvian Spanish or Colombian Spanish and definitely not in Dominican Spanish. But the real difference with Spanish where like you'll really hear the difference is like how they speak Spanish in Spain. Um, and, and versus then Latin America. versus, versus, yeah, Latin America, literally, like literally everywhere else that speaks Spanish. Um, it's very different. Like I can't. I can't really describe it, but once you if once you hear it, if you if you were to hear like a side by side, you'd be able to hear the difference. It's so her, so weird. her name will be pronounced Isabella Merced. Well, well, if if you spell it with two L's. No, no, I mean, oh, no, I mean like no. What was what I was? Oh wait, because if I, you spelled what, it with two L's, which you told me it was spelled with only one, the two L makes a J sound in Spanish. So that that would actually say Isabella instead of Isabella. So so so, so her name would actually be Isabella. E- yeah, it's Isab- Isabella. Okay, yeah, Isabella Merced, uh, which granted. <laughs> Like Grant, I'm very like like you know they like I'm very sure Leslie Grace was, is going to do a great job. She was great oh, in yeah. the Heights, but I will say that one part of my brain is like, oh man, wouldn't it be well, so if? cool if, if if like Isabella? Now Merced we need a DC's what if with what if we cast Isabella Merced? Yeah, as like her as a superhero and whatnot, yeah. which Grant does kind of show how you know that that even that even DC was noticing how good she is of an actress cuz yeah. cuz again like she like sort of like with Josh Peck she's able to make like jokes that are sort of funny make them really funny yeah. like pl- like what I loved about most about her performance as Dora was that like how she kind of, at times she kind of played Dora as if she were kind of crazy like just like like looking at the camera all with bug eyes and whatnot just just being kind of weird yeah but yeah um and sort of going along with uh, Leslie Grace as Batgirl, apparently J.K. Simmons is co- in talks to come back as Commissioner Gordon, meaning this takes place in the, <coughs> which means this this takes place in the Snyderverse. Uh, what are your thoughts on on uh, them doing a Batgirl movie starring Leslie Grace, and that J.K. Simmons might come back as Commissioner Gordon? I think it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. Add some uh, continuity to some of their stuff. That'd be neat. Yeah, I'm like Grant. I don't know them. Like I don't know too much about Bad Girl and whatnot. I mean, Grant, I, I know I know a, a, a bit about her. Like you know, because you know she um in the comics she's Commissioner Gordon's daughter, mm-hmm. and eventually, and I I don't remember if it's the Killing Joke. No, oh. it's, it's not the Killing Joke. But eventually she gets shot in the spine. By no, the that, that's that's the Killing that's, Joke. Okay, yeah, she gets shot in the spine by the Joker and becomes a paraplegic and becomes, becomes the Oracle. Oracle. Yeah, yeah, I know that because of the bat of the uh, of the Batman game, like the, Batman, the Arkham yep. games. Yeah, the Arkham games are awesome. Yeah, and I gotta say, um, I. 
Uh, I do, I, I, yeah, um, uh, when it comes to, uh, yeah, when it comes to Batgirl, I know that stuff about her, and I know that in the Batman Killing Joke animated movie, she had sex with Batman, which yeah, just, just made, kinda, kinda makes weird, no bro. sense. It's kind of weird, like, Commissioner Gordon's supposed to be your friend, you're supposed to have his back, and what, you're, you're gonna fuck his daughter? I didn't even, I don't even see the, I don't even see Batman and Batgirl as a romantic duo. No, like, it's, it's just, like, basically his kid, she's his protege, she, it's, like, weird, it's, like... Like, Batman's, like, like Catwoman's it's, it's, thing. It's, like, it's, like, such a, the, the weird, the thing that makes it weird is, like, the power imbalance, right? Because, like, he's supposed to be, like, a mentor to her. He's supposed to be teaching her how to fight crime, not teaching her how to coom. But, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's it's just weird no matter how you slice it. And I yeah, think that's I, probably I one of my to... least favorite parts about the Killing Joke animated, animated movie. I, I mean, here's, here's one of my other problems with the Killing Joke animated movie. It's, like, even when it gets to the Killing Joke sequence, it, oddly enough, feels kind of lifeless in its animation. Forced. No, not even forced. It's like, no, I mean, like, I'm talking about once you get the actual killing joke part. Like, oh, okay. It feels kind of lifeless, and I think I know why. Unlike, when, you, when you're trying to go some, like, from t- from 2D to 3D, I mean, I, I mean, two, like, when you're trying to adapt 2D, I think it's, like, it comes across a lot better. Like, like how do I describe it? It's like, it's sort of like why, like, how do I describe it? Um, it's, it doesn't feel like you're getting a whole lot out of it when you're just going from, like, a comic, and then you're do, and then the animated movie is just try, is just doing the exact same thing, except you're trying you know, to add some panels in between to reach fluidity. And, and, and it doesn't move a whole lot. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're trying. Because yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, say what you will about the Lion King remake, but they added another dimension to it. Yeah. Like they added like a third dimension to it to yeah, actually they, bring yeah. it to life and whatnot. Whereas, which is why I think if you were going to try to do the killing, killing joke. You might want to do it as a, it's like, I'm not trying to shit on animation, I'm not, I, I, do, I do want to defend. At, at least change it enough, like, don't like, just. Ch- or like, change the do, imagery. Do, some, and do something do, new. Do, yeah. crea- do something creative with the imagery Maybe, maybe do, like, a more photorealistic style of art or something. Yeah, I or, see what you're or, saying. Or, at the very least, don't make it, you know, a really shittily budgeted kind of, like, cause like, that's why I, that's why I'm just not, like, yeah, for d- example. D- the d- disclaimer, though, it should be said, like, most, most animated movies aren't like the killing joke the killing joke is yeah, just no. a, a well, well, specifically bad well, well, animated well, 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 movie. Here's, the, here's the thing the reason why i don't get excited for any like the dc animated stuff like for example they recently oh yeah it's because like, there a lot the, of them are like that like like they announced like an injustice you know an injustice animated movie uh straight to dvd is everything okay you know, yeah 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 they announced like a you know a straight to dvd injustice thing i'm like i'm not excited for that because like i know it's, yeah, gonna, it's be gonna be a, a low kinda, budget yeah. and then and like it's just like yeah. yeah, the the one the ones that I've seen I've seen Batman Under the Red Hood, um, which was meh. Like if you or the oh or what if you did like a Killing Joke movie but it was in like the style of or like the kind of animation style of like Spider Man Spider Verse yeah that's like, exactly that what was I was about to, yeah great, like that was a fantastic it paid idea. homage to the comic imagery but still again adding it had more its dimen- own art style like mm-hmm. adding dimensions to it and whatnot it's just whereas with the Killing Joke it's just you know kind of a more like a, a version of the comic that just kind of slightly moves a little bit more just, yeah it's like it's like having one of those you um. It's like those spinny things where it has like still images inside of it, but when you spin it, it makes it look like it's an air. Like, like a flip book. A flip ex- book. Unless, except you're cutting out half the frames. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, you know, uh, regardless, Batgirl, I'm, I am looking somewhat forward to this. Um, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I am, I am looking forward to this. Um, uh, especially interested to see this is actually going to take place. Uh, at least if they get J.K. Simmons to come back, this is going to be taking place in the current DCEU, which grant I think Suicide Squad technically do, the, the Suicide Squad is technically doing that too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, but speaking of HBO Max and DC, uh, remember when we talked about how they're going to be doing a theatrical Black Superman movie with uh, with J.J. Abrams producing and whatnot? Oh yeah, Steel. No, not Steel. It's not going to be John Henry Irons. It's yeah, go- it's Steel. It's no, no. Yeah, we're talking about Steel with Shaq? No. We're, we're bringing back Shaq, right? No. So we're bringing back Shaq is what I'm hearing. No. Damn it. No. But I will say, apparently... Zero al- out of ten. Apparently, along with that, this, uh, like, the theatrical Black Superman movie, they're also going to be... Do- like, Michael B. Jordan's going to be developing an, a, a separate Black Superman project for HBO Max. Oh, Steel. God, no. So they're bringing back Shaq for Steel. No. Michael B. Jordan is Shaquille O'Neal, who is Steel. 
Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be crazy if they did though? Like, Dude, that would like, actually be lit. I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. If it was not connected to, like, if it, if it was like sort of like what, if it was like what they were doing with like Jake with J. Joe Jameson, like the news yeah. in the new Spider-Man movies, and they didn't give Shaq a whole lot to do dramatically, and they just brought him back as Steel, like. I'll go live. Kind of cool. Be, might be kind of lit. <laughs> Again, like, people uh, people like nostalgia. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, I think it would be. I, th- I think it's an idea that would probably be so stupid it might it actually might work. work. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like yeah. Because uh, like you wouldn't do something that stupid unless you, you actually almost, knew exactly yeah. what you're doing with well, it. You had a sweet spot to hit. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, granted, that steel movie was garbage. Well, dude, but, it was dude, beyond garbage. Come on, <laughs> dude. Garbage. That's, remember, that's a remember kind that of a compliment. One, remember that one. One scene in the movie where like they, they fight they fight grenades like and they have to figure out how to get rid of the grenades like they look up and it's like and they see a hole in the in the cage where it's like <laughs> I never make these I never make these. it's like oh good because Shacknet doesn't do, <laughs> doesn't do free throws bro <laughs> I was like oh no oh no <laughs> but regardless regardless Michael B Jordan is doing his own Black Superman series based on this character named Val Zod I don't know anything about Val Zod do you know anything about Val Zod Mm-mm. Oh dang! Uh, but now it's said that um that uh, he oh it's a, it's gonna be a limited series. Although uh, he, it says he's developing uh, he's developing this show like he's like his production company is. But however, it's up in the air as to whether or not he'll actually play Superman or not. Yeah, that's I hope that's he does. Awesome. I mean, yeah, it'd, it'd be kind of cool. But it's it's neat that he's involved. Yeah, I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on them doing like another Black Superman, and that it's going to be a limited series? And I'm, I'm be... excited to see Steel again. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I am genuinely excited. I think it's going to be interesting to see, especially as a limited series. Um, with Michael B. Jordan, he's a super talented guy. Uh, regardless of, of if you're looking at it from a production standpoint or as an actor, if they do decide to put him in it to any extent, um, I think it's I'm, I'm definitely optimistic for it. Um, it is HBO. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's you know HBO is a pretty reputable. And not and not CW. CW, dude, fucking. I'm gonna go on record. Fuck CW. Okay, I hate I hate pretty much everything they've ever done, and I. That's how I feel about it. I hate them. Oof. End of story. But yeah, like I, I am looking forward to to what they're gonna do with uh, this this other uh, with this other Black Superman story. Yeah. Um, and I also I am kind of hoping uh, that Michael B. Jordan stars in it. I mean, like Michael B. Jordan is stupid good of an actor. Oh yeah. Oh my god! Like I like honestly, his performance in Black Panther might be the only Marvel Cinematic Universe performance I would probably give an Oscar nomination to. Yeah. Like he was that good. Like I mean, hell, like like oh uh, he was he was phenomenal. And the fact that he like he's wanted to do Superman. That's interesting. Like that. Like I, I again, it's just. Like, granted, like, there's not a whole lot of other, you know, nothing, there's not a whole lot of, um, there's not a whole lot of, um, info on this other than, like, this is not connected to the one that's being produced by J.J. Abrams, um, but, you know, I am, I am looking forward, uh, to, I am looking forward to this, uh, version of Superman. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Yeah. Uh, spe- speaking of streaming services, uh, this kind of shocked me that, uh, Netflix did like the, one of the guys, one of the heads at Netflix, um, uh, went on, like was doing this, uh, one expo, not expo, but it's an interview for Variety. And basically a lot of this has to do with, uh, with this, um, him saying that, acknowledging that ne- most Netflix movies aren't all that good, and they, he wants to try to focus more on quality than quantity and whatnot in the future. Wow, and it took them this long to acknowledge what everybody already knew. Like, I'm not gonna act like every Netflix movie's bad. Like, okay, you know, no, not every one of them is bad, and that's yeah, not like, what I'm like, saying either. Yeah, but like, most of them are. You have to wade through like you. You have to wade knee deep in shit to get to the good stuff. Like, for like, for like every, for, like every Irishman. They, they have yeah. That's what I was about to say. For every Irishman, there's like. Four or five freaking freaking sh- crappy bright sp- yeah bright or, or freaking the 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 I think bright was the one that Will Smith did yeah and, but, yeah, yeah there's there's like five or six of those I haven't or seen just I haven't seen some bright. some crappy animated schlock that was thrown together with Adobe After Effects it's really it's like the the quality to quantity ratio is heavily skewed towards or skewed toward to um. 
qual- to, qual- to qual- quantity over over quality. Yeah, because I, I will say there are some Netflix movies I do really like. Yeah. For, I think for me, Netflix, Netflix's biggest film, my, best film in my opinion, was The Irishman. Yeah, uh, and, and and you do get stuff like this, but like, then, but then you also, also get shit like Bird Box, and it's just like. Like it's like I I'm trying to think of some others I really like. Like I also really liked Marriage Story. I yeah, love the, the Trial of Chicago Seven. Yeah, was and then great. Um, the, the Buster Scruggs. Um, I was kind of bad yeah. of Buster Scruggs. I thought the first half was really strong, and then I thought the like well, I guess the first third I think was uh, for me. My main strong. problem is that it really should have just been about Buster Scruggs. Yeah, yeah. Like that that first part was so mm-hmm. good, especially especially that song when a cowboy uh t- trades his spurs for wings. It was so heartbreaking. Yep. But it's like but then it, the the rest of it is really. Like there's like yeah. some of the stuff is good. Like the James Franco yeah. part was was pretty good, and there was also this this one gold digging guy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's like this really long one involving like this this western trek or whatnot. And then there's like this one involving a stagecoach. It's like it's that kind goes of, on for so yeah, it's long. It's kind of boring. And I was like, where the what the hell happened? What it's were like, they I, thinking? It's like it's again. It's, not, it's uh, for me. That's why I say it's kind of eh, because like there's some stuff that's really good. Yep. Some stuff that's like it's just like eh. But I will say. um... Uh, you know, I really liked Marriage Story. I really, uh, My Rain's Black Bottom was great. Uh, oh my, one movie that came out oh, last Defy year. Five Bloods, wasn't that enough? Oh yeah, Defy yeah. Blood, that was great. Mm-hmm. Another movie that does not get enough love, in my opinion, was, uh, Pieces of a Woman. Pieces of a Woman was did, really, really good. Oh, yeah, I, finally, I finally got around to seeing it. Oh yeah. man, that, the, that. Terrifyingly strong. Y- y- man, that movie was, that movie got heartbreaking yeah, quick. It's, it's it? really hard to watch, but in a yeah. really good way. Yeah, and oh my God, Vanessa Kirby fucking killed it. And I I wish Ellen Burstein got more uh, got more awards love because like you know Ellen Burstein's character. Yeah. Yeah, like the old like the sort mm-hmm. of like the mo- like the sort of the my mother figure is what I would sort of yeah I, th- describe I think her as. I think I think Vanessa I think she played Vanessa Kirby's yeah. mother, but oh I wish she got more love and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, Pieces of a Woman was phenomenal. Uh, but they just, they just don't have enough stuff like that. Oh, I forgot the problem. Also, the two popes. Yeah, yeah, so the two, yeah, yep, the two popes. Also but they phenomenal. but they don't have enough stuff like that. Like for 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 every one of those movies, you get you get like ten, twenty, maybe even thirty that are like bright or just yeah really just, lazy pieces of garbage. Which is why I think like, that's one of the main things that this guy was saying, uh, like the the head of Netflix saying we we want to try to focus more on qu- qu- quality than quantity. And one of the things he said that they're doing, he is desperate to get Christopher Nolan to get to be to do his ha huh, good luck. He's he, this is what he says. Um, uh, the deal with Ambl- also because he was talking about how like they got Steven Spielberg to do a movie. They're getting Steven Spielberg yeah. to do a movie for them. Uh, the deal with Ambling gives Stuber hope. I think I think that's his name. Uh, his name is Scott Stuber. Gives Stuber hope that he might be able to lure Christopher Nolan, an outspoken advocate for the big screen experience, to Netflix. Particularly now that Nolan has soured on Warner Brothers over the studio's decision to send its entire twenty-one film slate to HBO Max. Uh, the pair have ongoing. The pair have on, have had ongoing conversations. That, that's a confusing statement, though, right? Because like, if if Christopher Nolan's main problem. Oh, is is that they've oh, they've gone from? That's what. Oh, oh. No, sorry. I'm just, I'm just gonna finish this real yeah, quick. Yeah. If his main problem is, is that they've gone from doing theatrical releases to streaming services, why would a streaming service get hopeful about being able to convince him to come to them if they are what they are in his opinion that, the problem? Well, that's that's where the second paragraph comes in. All right. Uh, if and he says if and when he comes up with this new movie, it's about t- it's about can we be a home for it and what we would need to do to make that happen. Says Stuber, he's an incredible filmmaker. I'm going to do everything I can in this person in this business. I've learned you need to you need to have zero ego. I get punched and knocked down and get back up. Basically, he's saying we will do anything it takes to get Christopher Nolan okay, but to I, move with us. Here's the thing: unless Netflix has the ability to release things exclusively into theaters i don't think there's anything they can do oh to that's what i'm for nolan that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking if the my theory is that if they want christopher nolan so badly i'm willing to bet that if christopher like i'm willing to bet that if, that if they make a deal with christopher nolan this will be the first netflix film to be exclusively to theaters i mean eventually it'll go on to netflix of course but it yeah. will that if he's if he is being true to this, saying we will do any, I will do anything I can to get Christopher Nolan to do a movie for us, you know, he, like if he's willing to go, if he says he will do anything, he probably like that means they will probably put this in theaters, like a proper big theatrical experience. Right, but see, 
here is here is my my problem or or where I see a problem. So <clears throat> it's not like HBO Max is even saying that they're only going to be releasing. Um, I think one of the main problems I think that like Chris Nolan had was like he did like ne- HBO Max never told any of their filmmakers that they sure, were going to be sure, sure, and and that might be a problem. But even even if you tell them, obviously he didn't like the, like it, so it's it's completely probable that he still would have decided to part ways with them if, if that's what he's doing over this. So so here's here's my problem. So would that not kind of what's that going to do to Netflix if they have to resort to doing actual theatrical releases which will mean that they won't be able to immediately put the movie onto Netflix which is the thing that people like about Netflix having it immediately and comfortably available um if what you're basically saying that to attract these big directors we're going to have to give them theatrical releases uh, wouldn't that just mean that you failed as a streaming service and have now well, resorted to have to become a well, here's the, they studio didn't, they they haven't here they ha- they didn't say anything about that with uh with steven spielberg or whatnot i think right now like this this whole thing is only about christopher nolan and i'm saying like like christopher I th- what i think is like christopher nolan might be like one of like might be like the one-off thing or like or like the rare thing because Christopher, like, if there's one director you do not say no to in Hollywood, it's Christopher Nolan. Like, you don't say no to, you, like, if he demands something, you give it to him, because he's yeah. proven his success. I, I think it just depends on Netflix's willingness to to release something in a theater. Um, I think, if, if they're not willing to do that, then they're just not getting I Christopher mean, Nolan. I'm going to take, I'm going to take Scott Stuber by his word. If he says, if he says, uh, you know, what we, like, if he says, um... I'm if he says I'm going to do everything I can, everything I can with the power and money that Netflix has, I take it by his word that he's will that he would probably be willing to put a, a Christopher Nolan movie in theaters if it means getting him to do a movie for them. Yeah, I, I mean maybe it, what if that were to happen it's, though? I mean, like, it'd be cool, but I just I, I'd say it's it's still a big maybe because he that that's the thing about that statement he knows what it is he has to do to get christopher nolan to do a movie for netflix christopher nolan himself has pretty much outlined what that is with his you know leaving from from hbo and whatever and and, and for me it would be bigger if he said i'm i'm going to be willing to put a movie into theaters for this guy than just saying everything i can it's kind of it's a very safe and blanket statement i don't know who knows um i i if if they are willing to do, if he, if if they are willing to actually compromise with no, Nolan, yes, I think do, it'll be awesome. I think it'll because, be awesome because every because every time Christopher Nolan makes a movie, I like aside from following, which I was oh, not a big fan of, but that, again, that was his first movie. He was already an amateur at that point. Everything he's made up uh, after that, I think, was just masterful. Like, have you, seen, of, uh, have you seen Memento? Oh, yeah, I've seen all of his movies. Yeah, Memento is pretty. Memento cool. is. Uh, Mem- I love the shit out of Memento, uh, Insomnia, uh, Batman Begins, The Prestige, uh, The Dark Knight, The uh, Dark Knight Rises, Inception, Interstellar, uh, Dunkirk, Tenet. I love. I love every single movie he's done except for Following, which again, that was again that was yeah. that was his first one. Like, so. Like and plus with Christopher Nolan, aside from aside from Tenet, which really you kind of have to put an asterisk in long its box offices because of the pandemic, he like Christopher Nolan's like one of the like one of the like one of the only directors who can sell a movie just by his name, even if it's an original project right. like Inception, Interstellar, or Dunkirk. Like he can make big blockbusters from original ideas, and people will go see it because Christopher Nolan's name. They love Nolan, and like. I can see why Netflix would be... That's why I believe him when he says that he would be willing to do anything, because Christopher Nolan has that trust with the audience. He knows how to deliver big, explosive entertainment from just an idea in his head. Yeah. And just... Because, like... Well, I mean, it'll definitely be what they need to dig themselves out of the trash heap that is Netflix's movie selection. Yeah, like... Because, hell, even Spielberg can't really sell a movie anymore. I mean, I'm not saying his movies are all going to be bombs, but it's like, you know, he himself... His name itself won't... Yeah, I mean... Everything okay? Yeah, that's just my diabetes machine. Yeah. Like, even... yeah, because like, what what was the last real big budget blockbuster that Spielberg even did? Uh, Ready Player One, which again did well, but I'm saying like, you know, for example, the BFG didn't do well. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, so that's what I'm saying. Like, his name doesn't always carry the big box office dollars. Nolan does. Like, who else so, had Dunkirk? 
you know, this real talk. Did BFG just stand for big fucking giant? Big friendly giant. Uh, I mean, why, it's, a, it's a rated PG movie. Why would it be fucking gi- big fuck? Oh, fuck. Everything okay? Yes, it's it's my diabetes machine. Oh, dang. Do you need a Mountain Dew Zero? Actually, there's no calories. Oh, that help me. Uh, do you want an ice cream sandwich? Yes. All right. Uh, we will pause. We'll be right back. Yep. But yeah, like with Dunkirk. Dunkirk is like a, just this, you know, World War Two movie. No one thought it was gonna make that much money. Yeah, it made five hundred million dollars. Yeah, because it was fucking awesome. It's, uh, it's it was literally freaking awesome. It's my second favorite Nolan movie after The Dark Knight. Mm. But yeah, um, if Netflix actually manages to score a deal with Nolan and and probably pull up a movie in full wide release, this will be a big win for this them. This will be a huge, massive win for them. Mm-hmm. Maybe hopefully we'll start them on the track to realize that they should do this with. Oh shit! Okay, stop. But more than just like, you know, they should be willing to bend their backs for more directors. You know. Uh huh. Okay. Depending on who the director is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you know, you don't want to give too much freedom. Like, I don't know. Let's say M Night Shyamalan or whatever. <laughs> but like, someone like a Nolan or Tim, whoever directed the 2016 Ghostbusters, I just had their name in my head. Paul Feig. Paul Feig. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I don't dislike Paul Feig as a director. Oh, shit. Everything okay? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm just going to do that for a bit, but I'll be good. But um, I liked, what was it, Brides, Bridesmaids? Bridesmaids. But I, I think that's really the I, only movie of his that I've seen that I think is worth a shit. I don't know. I, I, actually, I actually liked his Ghostbusters movie, which, funny enough, uh, that kind of segue... Actually, wait, no. Oh, wait, no. Go- we'll be talking about Ghostbusters a little bit later. But, uh... uh that sound effect Mm. oh good Mm. Mm, meaty (laughs) but yeah um but speaking of stream uh but speaking of streaming service also i might try to clear up the bookmarks here a bit Mm -hmm. um but yeah speaking of streaming services and whatnot um not like things aren't always as happy go lucky as things are going on with Netflix and whatnot because uh some of them are in the shitter. Yeah, some some of them are uh, uh, yeah, literally getting sued. Yeah, cuz uh, like ba- Disney. Yeah, di- yeah, <laughs> di- basically this whole thing uh D- Scarlett Johansson is suing Disney over Black Widow's Disney Plus release and the reason being is because it's pretty much the same exact thing that happened with Warner yeah. Brothers and yeah. HBO Max. And they were just like, where, oh, they kind of didn't tell me they were doing this. And yeah. Then... Basically, like, this is what, um, I think this is what her, um, her, her, um, what was it? I don't know if it's, her, I think it's, I don't know if it's her lawyers or something, um, but, um, it says, to maximize these receipts and thereby protect their financial interests, Ms. Johansson extracted a promise from Marvel that the release of the picture would be a theatrical release, the suit claimed. As Ms. Johansson, Disney, Marvel, and most everyone else in Hollywood knows, a theatrical release is a release that is exclusive to movie theaters. Disney, as well, was well aware of this promise, but nonetheless directed Marvel to violate its pledge and instead release this picture on the Disney Plus streaming service the very same way it was released in movie theaters. Okay, uh, so that doesn't make a lot of so. Oh, hold on, hey, oh, hold on. It, this whole thing gets it gets actually uh, this whole thing gets even worse because it escalates because uh uh then Disney fired back saying there is no merit to what to, whatsoever to this filing. The lawsuit is especially shit. It's gonna. I'm, I need to mute you. I I know my blood sugar's low. Uh, uh, I hope I... Uh, do you need another sandwich or something? No, I'll, I'll let you know if I do. Alrighty. So. Yeah, it says, there's no merit... What, Disney, a Disney spokesperson said, there's no merit whatsoever to this uh, filing. The lawsuit is especially sad and distressing. That's a weird terminology to use. <laughs> in its callous disregard for the, horrifi- for the horrific and prolonged... Oh, everything okay? Yes. Alrighty, uh, because this is this this part mm-hmm. is really important. It says uh, it is especially sad and distressing in its callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Even though this contract was signed in two thousand seventeen, 
long before this was a pandemic. Yeah, no, dude, this is what I was about to say. I like how Disney... Hold on. I'm sorry I keep interrupting you, but this is is big, important stuff. Disney has fully complied with Mr. Johansson's contract, and furthermore, the release of Black Widow on Disney Plus with Premier Access has significantly enhanced her ability to earn additional compensation on top of the $20 she has received to date. So not only did they, like, completely disregard the fact that, um, that... This whole contract was signed both before, before COVID. COVID, but they also just said what her salary. They just lay out to everyone, "Hey guys, she made twenty million dollars. Do you really want to feel sad for her, even though it's- no, it's it's a complete scumbag piece of shit move." And and here's the thing that really kind of blows my mind. It's not like they were like, "Oh, we're just gonna release it a day after it releases into movie theaters." Um, it's it's not. They just they just completely disregarded the contract that they signed with it. They were just like, yeah. "Oh yeah, fuck it. We're gonna do what we want." Because here's the thing, people. People were saying the exact same thing about people. What well, I'm about to say, people were saying the exact same thing about the whole HBO Max debacle when their talent rightfully got pissed. Where it was like people were like, "Oh, the Hollywood leads just want their money." It's like it's not just about money; it's about trust. It's literally about your word and whether or not it legal mean, stuff. it means anything. Whether or not it means anything, and also yes, legal ramifications. Right now, Disney has proven that it. Okay, and, and it's Disney. Like, Disney saying, oh, but she made $20 million. This is a very ironic thing for Disney to say, considering that they literally rake in millions by the second. Like, like how, if anything, you're really just trying to prevent yourself from no, losing just, money that you won't ultimately even notice. They're just trying to make more money from Disney. Yeah, for, them, for themselves. For, from, for Disney+. Plus. And the thing is, like, um, like, how do I describe it? It's like, it's just, it's like... It's wrong on two fronts, because, like, here, here's one thing. It would be one thing if, like, A, they they had amended the contract and, and adjusted yeah, for, they, her, for the Disney Plus revenue for yeah, her. If they, if they consulted but, they, her. but they literally were just like, oh, yeah, you're only going to get the theatrical dollars, and fuck you. We're releasing it on Disney Plus anyhow. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if they had, like, made, a, like, you know, like... It was a 100% sh- like, business decision... Like, like if they if they did things like it you know like selfish. try to control like control like like what was it like uh, consulting with her legally yeah. and whatnot or amen, to, amending or, the contract just amend yeah, the contract like buy her out of the contract that would have been that, completely or, fine or do that even, don't even backstab your just, talent yeah yeah, yeah because then you know what dude no never yes and to work on other stuff they're gonna be like yeah you know you remember that time where you fucked me because I remember. And and they're not going to want to work with you. It's it's yeah, that's not that's a good... why Christopher Nolan walked away from Warner Brothers. Do you realize how big of a mistake Warner Brothers just made when like that they pissed off Nolan? Why why burn a bridge when you can just throw money at it? Money that you totally a hundred and ten percent have being Disney. It's I just... don't know. And the thing is, like, this is all because, I thought, like, this new CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, Bob Iger would have never done this. Like, Bob... Yeah, and Bob, Bob Iger, you know, he's, he's a weird guy. He's done some 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 strange things with, like, opening Disney parks places, but that's about it. I mean, here, oh, like, that's oh, really here, it. Oh, here's the thing. Uh, Bob Chapek, he was the guy in charge of Disney parks. And he was, and now he's the CEO of Disney. It's so, like, you want to blame... Like, all, like, all that stuff... It's, were... it's all coming together. Yeah. It's full circle. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why... Why is Bob Chapek the big guy at Disney right now? Like, like Bob Iger was solid. Like, he was solid. Like, why? Like, I mean, Grant, I get why Bob Iger might want to step down, but it's like, you couldn't have picked anyone but, like, who like who actually gives a damn about the media? Cause, about the... Because here's the thing about Disney. Yeah, they have parks. Yeah, they have stores and whatnot. But Disney is primarily an entertainment company. Yep. That's why I was. That's why I'm more comfortable with with Warner Media going over to Discovery than AT and T because Discovery is a media company. Yep. With Disney, get someone who's who who knows media and whatnot, not the guy who runs the Disney parks. Who even then people criticized his work on the Disney parks. And, and, by the way, you know who else was pissed off at, uh, this whole situation? Who? Uh, big man himself, Kevin Feige, was not happy with this at all. Like, this is what, like, this, apparently, uh, this comes from this place called, uh, What I'm Hearing, and that, that may sound like a very, like a very, like, not well-known source, but the guy who runs the site is Matthew Baloney who uh <laughs> Baloney I'm sorry I'm sorry I really I really tried hard not to it sounds like Baloney <laughs> yeah but here's the thing yeah it sounds like a you know a nobody knows the, the lunch this, meat. 
uh, like, oh, I mean, like, the yeah, site, yeah. what I'm what hearing, hearing. Yeah. it sounds like, you know, the, you know, this website, like, okay, no one knows what the site is. Matthew Baloney was was from the Hollywood Reporter, which oh, is a okay, very yeah, yeah. and Hollywood Reporter is, is yeah. really reputable. So you could probably take what this guy's saying to the bank. And he said, "This is what he was told: Feige is a company man and prone to co- to cooperate, corporate, yeah. uh, to and prone to corporate showdowns or shouting matches. But I'm told he's angry and embarrassed. He lobbied Disney against the day and date plan for Black Widow, preferring the big screen exclusivity and not wanting to upset his talent. Furthermore, the report." Says that when shit hit the fan and the uh, the movie started tanking and Johansson's team threatened l- litigation, Disney tried to get Disney to make this right with her. So even they they pissed off Kevin Feige with this whole thing. Even Kevin Feige is not okay with this. It's like it's almost that's it's like almost that's the wrongest they could have gotten. Like they they had one thing that they really just shouldn't have done and they just decided to do it. Like, like, but like Bob Iger's whole thing was trying to make relationships with his with his talent and yeah, build bridges, don't burn them. Yeah, and look, but you know, it's a new it's a new boss. He's got to show you that he's not the same as the old boss. That he's he's about burning bridges now. Yeah, because like, because yeah, here's the thing, Bob Iger, he Fucking was behind idiot man. Bob Iger was behind so many big like the biggest acquisitions from Disney. Was because of Bob Iger. He he was behind the acquisition of Pixar, Marvel, yeah, it's, it's almost Lucasfilm, like he had, and it's almost like he had a brain in his head that worked. Yeah, like this guy. Yeah, Bob. Ch- I don't know what. the... Oh, and he's been running the parks for so long that his brain has become a Disney amusement park. Yeah, it's just like I hope they do something about Bob Chapek because he's. If he he they, needs to check himself before he wrecks his entire company. Yeah, they gotta do like the 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 chairman of the like the, the the board of the chair board or I don't know what I don't they know. They need to the, pull a Papa John's. They need to get this guy out of there. Yeah, <laughs> like, they honestly, need, at this point, he's, he's kind of been making some questionable decisions. Very questionable decisions, really. It's just like, God, it, he's he's literally straight up. This he's gotten Disney into into actual legal trouble now. Mm. You got you guys are probably gonna go to litigation and court. Oh, it's not just that. Other stars uh, who have been who have been involved in other day and date release plans on Disney Plus, like Emma Stone, are considering filing suit too. So how does this affect like Florence Pugh and everyone else that was if, involved with this movie? How what, what, did, what did their contracts look like? I don't. I have no clue. That's what I want to know. Like she can't. She can't be the only one that's getting stiffed by this. Mm. Mm. And, and it's, I'm saying, as far as relative to Black Widow, I don't know. Again, that's really that's what I'm interested good. to hear. It doesn't sound good. That's what that's what I'm interested to hear about. That's what, that's what, I, what I'm I'm waiting for. So when are we gonna get the Florence Pugh lawsuit? When are we gonna get the guy from Stranger is... Things lawsuit? Oh, David Harbour, yeah, David Harbour. or Emma Stone <laughs> yeah. with Gorilla, or yeah, with Gorilla. Or, oh God, or or Wolf du- Dwayne Johnson gets involved because he, he has Jungle Cruise coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is just a. Dis- so if I if I was Disney, I'd be shitting myself right now. Yeah, it's just the, oh you might oh you might want to move to where like the yeah, microphone and whatnot. Oh, 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 oh no, I mean like uh, 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 just, oh oh there we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just like it's just this whole thing with with it just it just looks bad. It makes you look bad. It's not a good look for you. <laughs> Yeah, at all. And here's the thing: last year they had a complete restructuring of Disney, where like there's the production branch and the distribution branch, yeah. basically meaning like uh, the basically this whole new distribution branch of Disney. Uh, before before a project gets made, they now decide you know where is it going to go and whatnot. And it's like basically they're putting everything into streaming right now. Which right. I I get that, but it's like there's got to be a better way to do it than this. There definitely is. They just decided to. And apparently it's made. Th- and apparently from other reports, it's made things so conf. Like this whole restructuring of Disney has made things so confusing. Oh yeah, I try bet. to work there. It's just like regardless. I hope they get something straightened out. I like. I don't. I, I don't like calling for people's jobs, but th- this is not a good. Yeah, look he for needs Bob to change your leave. He needs to change your leave. He needs to really pull his head out of his ass. So this is like, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, why would like don't when in your when you don't get people who don't have experience in a certain thing, like be in charge of that thing. Again, there, like, there's with, probably like, something eight, behind. It. You know, there's always someone saying or doing something to get somewhere. I I bet you it's some kind of. It's got to be related to someone, or he knows someone, and that's the only reason he got the job. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't try and make those kind of claims. No, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, but I'm just. <sighs> I just think it's. I, I think it's just a a, a, a case of of poor of a poor choice of leadership, really. I mean, I'm just saying there had to have been other choices. 
I don't know. I don't know. Again, I don't know. But, but basically what I'm saying is, like, like, just get someone who's a media guy, a guy who's experienced in entertainment, to actually, you know... Work be, the entertainment field. Again, because you saw what happened with, with AT&T and Warner Media. Like, like, I'm not saying their movies got bad, but, but like, the way the, everything was structured and whatnot, in terms of, like, you know, the leadership was just messy. Like, the whole HBO Max thing. Like... Bless you. Uh, thanks. Uh, I mean, it, it was a burp, but yeah, I know. all right, yeah. Sorry, but regardless, um, yeah, this this is not a good look for Disney at all. Yeah, and and again, they pissed off Kevin Feige, and if, if like, they've already they've already seen what Kevin Feige they've already seen what Kevin Feige's like when they pissed him off once, like with uh, not piss, like at least when he was pissed off with you know, uh, what's it what, with um. Ike Perlmutter, the former yeah. head of Marvel, it's like, oh god, like I just hope they do something to resolve all this and whatnot. But yeah, any final thoughts on this subject? I don't like it. I think Disney has shit the proverbial bed. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, yeah, this, this is this is a whole mess, and uh, yeah. As for our final three topics, uh, we're going to be heading into copyright land for... Oh, for the- I'm going to get on the bus! Go roll straight into copyright land. It's going to feel really good! Yeah, the first movie we're going to be watching a trailer for that we'll go into copyright land for, and then we'll get your first reaction, because I don't think you've seen any of these trailers. Nope. I purposely didn't watch them so that you could get my reaction. Yeah. I did it on purpose. Yeah. And uh, the first one we're going to be checking out is Jackass Forever. And it actually was kind of hard because Reddit kept showing me... <laughs> Showing me threads and posts with these trailers, and I was like, "No, nah, I can't click on that." Dog. Yeah, so we'll go ahead in the copyright ra- copyright land real quick. Basically, we're gonna pause it and then you yeah, know, we'll, I'll be right back. We're just yeah. gonna go to New Mexico copyright land. You know, it's, it's the laws are different there. Yeah, here we it's go. Not like old Mexico. Here, here we go. And boy, we're back from copyright land. <laughs> copyright <laughs> land really hit different <laughs> this time. <laughs> What are your thoughts on uh, on the ja- on what are your thoughts on the trailer for Jackass Forever? Well, you know, I, I kind of have to give a disclosure. I'm biased. I re- I like the Jackass movies. I think they're hilarious. Yeah, I think I, they're just uh, like they're, I'll, I'll give, the, there's no plot or anything like that. Here's, but, here's the thing. You know, I will it's just, say it's like, just a bunch of dudes hurting themselves. I will say the, the first. <laughs> I do like the first two, although I will say there's some stuff that's a little bit problematic. Like like sometimes you see like a, a Confederate flag helmet, and uh, the second one has this uh, um, has like this the taxi gag. Yeah, have aged very well, but overall. You know what stuff does work does work, and uh, but by the time you got into Jackass three, they didn't try. They really to... refined it. Yeah. yeah, and then you get the bad grandpa was. Uh, yeah, bad my... grandpa was. An That's my favorite out of ride, album. bro. That one was a ride, a real ride. Like, I actually recently watched them, uh, like rewatched them yeah. and whatnot, and I gotta say, like the stuff that's funny is so it's funny. super funny. Yeah, yeah, and I, but like and funny, bad grandpa was actually nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I remember. Hairstyling. But um, but yeah, no, I, I thought the trailer looked like um more more jackass, which this, is great. But it's game, they they really kicking it up a notch. I'm not gonna lie. I saw but, a guy get bit in the face by a snake. Oh, but here's the thing. Before I saw this trailer, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't so sure how excited I was gonna be for Jackass Forever because like these guys are getting old. Well, like what are they gonna do? But I will say. They're still doing some ins. They still are doing some insane stuff. Like for example, like Johnny Knoxville fires you know, himself out of a uh, fucking cannon. Like, uh, hold on, let me just mute, mute it, this then. real quick. Yeah, that is insane. But also, what I've noticed that they're also adding in some younger blood. Yeah, Eric, Eric Andre. Oh yeah, yeah, they got Eric. Yeah, they got Eric Andre for this. Which that is like the that is perfect. That is that is exactly who you need, <laughs> bro. Eric, <laughs> Eric Eric is <laughs> the Eric Andre shows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and they also got a couple of other guys. Like the, you saw yeah. this one black guy that was yep. on there. Uh, mm-hmm. he, like I think he's like one of like the big. I don't know how much of Jackass Forever um, Eric Andre is gonna be in. Maybe for like maybe one or two yeah. segments. But they got two new guys. One of them is like this one guy. I don't know what his name is. But then there's this other guy, and his name is Poopies. Poopies. <laughs> uh, funny enough, remember when we were talking about that Jackass Shark Week thing? And yeah, we saw in in the trailer like you said. We we kind of had this debate where like you're like that guy's not getting you know getting mauled by a shark. There's no way they'd ever do that. We were wrong. You I no, was I wrong? yeah, you were way wrong. Well, shit. The guy was the guy. Poopy's got mauled by a shark. And he actually got had to go to the hospital. Like because like did he lose hand, anything? 
No, his, like, he had his, uh, nothing was, like, serious, but, like, his, I mean, not, well, I think it would have been serious if they didn't get him to the hospital. Like, they actually had to, uh, like, halt the whole bit, like, yeah. and f- get him over the, ho- like, his, like, his hand was in a cast and everything. Everything okay? Yeah. Do, do you need anything else? No, we're good. All right. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah, he had to actually go to the hospital. Like, that's how bad it got. Uh, but. I gotta say that this is a great idea. Adding in some of the old favorites like Steve and Johnny and whatnot, but also mixing it in with some new people who can take some of the harder hits. Because like I think Eric Andre's like thirty eight. Like he's still got a few years in him. Uh, Johnny, like Johnny, I gotta say Johnny Knoxville is also like how do I describe it. Like Johnny Knoxville, I will say uh, he's rocking the 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 gray yeah, hair. Yeah. Like apparently he's like he said he's had that for like twenty years or something, and he's just kind of been dying his hair. Yeah. But I gotta say, like he, he looks great with the gray with the gray hair. Yeah, but, he's pulling it off. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, uh, also speaking of Eric Andre, did you ever see Bad Trip? Bad Trip. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, but oh, it's on Netflix. Oh my God, it is so funny. It's like him with Lil Rel Howery and it's and uh, and t- and Tiffany Hash. It's a hidden camera prank movie, and they just go out pr- and like like because really you don't give a shit. Like I'm not saying the plot's bad, but it's like you don't. Yeah, dude, it's not. It's, not it's, the point. it's, it's, it's like it's, with Jackass. You're not watching. You're not there because you're like, oh, oh, I need to analyze the writing. Oh my god, it is ungodly funny. Yeah. Bad trip. You gotta watch bad right, trip. Bad trip. Yeah, and the fact that Tiffany, the stuff that Tiffany Haddish does. Because, again, she's going out and... and Pranking people. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, she's playing, like, this really toughened criminal and whatnot. Mm-hmm. She, I'm shocked that she has the guts to do some of this stuff, which gives me a lot of respect for her. Yeah. I, I already had respect for her, but this gives me right, right. even more respect. Um, <coughs> um, But, yeah. But the, I when we were watching this trailer, there was one part that really made your jaws drop where... Yeah, they the put fucking... Ho- they, they put honey and, and uh, salmon and... They attracted a black bear into yeah, this whole thing. Only the most dangerous kind of bear that you can hope to encounter. I don't know. I think a, I think a oh, yeah, grizzly, grizzly bear. Grizzly, yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, like, actually, I want to look this up. You, I think you might be right. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. What is the most dangerous bear? Probably According to Britannica, oh. grizzly and polar bears yeah. are the most dangerous. I knew about polar bears, but yeah, grizzly. Bears and American black bears have also been known to attack humans. Yeah, I mean, Grant, you still don't want to... No, you don't want to be covered bear. in food near a bear ever. <laughs> like, that's the last thing you want to be... No, I think it's on chain, so maybe it's not going to be able to get to him. Dude, either way, it's in the same room, and he's covered in honey. <laughs> and salmon. And salmon. They're two... <laughs> it's like it's two favorite things in the universe. <laughs> He's going to be Leonardo DiCaprio here in a bit. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'd be shitting myself. But, man, I got... But, yeah, this did give me a lot of confidence for Jack oh, yeah, me too, yeah. Like, I was, was kind of skeptical about it at first. Because, again, again, they're getting old. Yeah. I know Bam is not going to be in it because, again, he... He's a uh, crazy drug addict. But, again, uh, it's... It, like, uh, how do I describe it? It's like, I get why he's... he he, he why he Why he wanted... Dr- it basically, it's the like the drugs just do some really shitty things to you. It's oh like, yeah, no, I'm, dude, being, I'm, being addicted is is a horrible, horrible like, it's thing like, to witness. Like, it's like it's horrible it's like, thing to have happen to you. Because I'm willing to bet deep down he wants to get clean, but it's like his body just won't let him do that because of the drugs. Yeah, because he's physically addicted to them, and it's it's hard, dude. It's and, not easy and, to and do, and, it, and all it, this was, it alters your brain chemistry permanently. And, it's, and all and really, it was all because you know he was really uh, didn't you say like he was really depressed after yeah, he after was Ryan, Ryan Dunn him died? and Ryan Dunn were like this they they. I'm pretty sure they were friends since like childhood, and uh, I can't imagine that losing him was was easy. And also the way Ryan Dunn died, I mean, you can you can technically say that he he lost a fight with alcoholism. You know, he died drunk in a in a in a Porsche. Uh, but again, it's like losing a friend, or like or losing anyone you like you really care about. That's going to be hard on anyone. And and especially something something like that. Like I'm I'm no psychologist, and I'm not trying to be like an armchair psychologist, but like. Uh, I, I can imagine that to some degree, Bam felt at least partly responsible for for Ryan Dunn's death. You know, because the, their a lot of their lifestyle, at least on TV, was you know partying, skating, and and you know that you know, he died partying, bro. What can you say? Yeah, but again, you know, uh, but reg- even then, like this this movie really just tries, it really plays on the nostalgia of Jackass, yeah. like 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 going from like you know the beginnings and whatnot like remember 
and whatnot. It's just, it's just all like, it's just ironically enough, kind of wholesome in yes. a way. Um, Even though they're beating, beating each other up, basically. Yeah, it's just this is like this is probably like this is like like. It's basically playing up, you know, the idea that, you know, um, you know, everyone needs a good laugh, like, especially in this day and age and whatnot. Yeah. And this, I feel like... Who better than these guys? Yeah, th- like, this... Also, if I'm not mistaken, like, um, I don't know exactly who it is, but, like, someone was saying, like, uh, like from what I was reading, this guy in particular uh, was is somewhat of significance. Is that MGK? I don't so Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly. That's what yeah. people were saying. I don't know anything. Uh, I don't Megan, know Megan Fox's husband or boyfriend. Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Dang. And he's do and he's doing this crazy shit. Yeah, bro. Oh yeah, this seems he's, like... he's also a rapper. He, he he raps. Oh yeah, I just realized this seems to be like an extension of like that one bit in Jackass Three, where, like yeah. the big fucking yeah. hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What, Dude, how, it... how many times do you think we're we're gonna see uh uh the the. You know the 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 psycho music and then the, the oh yeah the, the <laughs> I don't know maybe I don't know maybe they'll do that I don't know I hope so they you gotta know, you know might be one of my fa- what, what might be one of my favorite jackass bits the, the poo cocktail that's one of mine oh my god <laughs> poo cocktail supreme dog. wait are you talking about like where like they, they strap Steve up like with his porta potty and, uh, and <laughs> slingshot him oh god yeah, the fir- I think the first one in the TV show. They they put him in a porta potty and they had a dump truck lift him up and shake him like a fucking soda can and it was disgusting. I haven't watched that much of the show. It was but disgusting. I the show is terrible, but in all no, the no, way not, ways. no, not terrible. No, terrible in all the good ways. <laughs> but I think one of my favorite ones that's like the most creative was like they got like this jet engine to like. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. I remember that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Imagine, like, having, like, a... I mean, Grant, they didn't... I don't think they did this, but, like, you know... Imagine, like, if you get, like, a watermelon, like... And, like... And, like, someone was there and, like, it hit them. That would probably kill someone if a watermelon oh, yeah, fucking hit you. Oh, yeah, from a jet engine? That, yeah, for, like, uh, that speed. Yeah, dude, you'd be fucked. Yeah, but, man, that is just... The, the power of that thing is insane. Just, like, uh Hell, I'm willing, I'm willing to go if you put your head near that thing. Like, dude, at, yeah, that, that you, close. you would get fucked. Yeah, it's it's a jet engine. They go, like, 600 miles per hour, and that's not even land... Well, yeah, I think that is the land speed, but they're, they're doing it in the air. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. it's a powerful thing. But, yeah, like, this... I Like, this... Like, but, like I said, this is just... This is just really cool. I do really like... uh a lot of the stuff. Also, the fucking oh my god! Like Johnny Knoxville getting, yeah, getting clocked away. by a bowl. And keep in mind, this dude's like this guy 49. was like forty nine when he filmed this. Like, like, like he's still willing to take a hit. Now, Grant, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be like the last Jackass movie. I can probably. I think assume. maybe with these guys, I think it'd be cool if they tried to set up like a second generation of Jackass, uh, with, like uh, Eric and. Uh, this okay? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that made me cringe. Yeah, yeah. This oh my god. Oh god! Dude, look at yeah, look at her face after she does it. Like, wait, wait, oh yeah, so play it, play it, play it, play it. She's so satisfied. Look at her. She's like, yeah. <laughs> hashtag. Yeah, she's has, like, yeah. <laughs> hashtag feminism. <laughs> yeah. Cock and ball torture. <laughs> oh god! Don't don't remind me of that. <laughs> and we're gonna be talking about uh, Dune here. Yeah, we're gonna be ta- we're gonna be going to copyright line for the Dune trailer. So uh, yeah. Well, I was definitely impressed by the casting. It's got it's got a lot of big name celebrities behind yeah, it. The Timothy. music was also really really good, and I also thought that that all of the shots of um was it, was it Ariaka or something the the planet were super I, I, pretty. I don't know I don't I, I don't know the Dune mythology and whatnot. Me neither. So I, can't... I, I haven't read the books. Yeah, but man, the cinematography is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like the cinematography is done by the same dude who shot um, uh, I think it's the same dude who shot um, uh, Rogue One. Oh yeah, and that movie also had some stunning cinematography and Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. No. 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 He. No. He wasn't in. Or, yeah. One. You're right. It was. Uh. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. He was in the sequels. Yeah. He was in. Yeah. He was in the sequels. Uh. But I will say. Uh. Like this is being directed by Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve, the guy who directed like Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah, I really uh, like Arrival. That. Uh, Prisoners. I don't and, think I don't think I've seen Prisoners. I haven't seen. I haven't seen Arrival either. Arri- I've seen Arrival. It was good. Yeah, again, but again, like the cast, like they got like what is it? Like they got uh, Javier Bardem. Yeah, the, Timothy uh, Chalamet. Yep. Uh, yeah, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, Josh, Josh Brolin, Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, Dave Bautista, Stephen McKinley Henderson, which I don't know who that is. Zendaya, Zendaya yeah. uh, Chang Chen, Sharon Duncan Brewster, Charlotte Rampling, Jason Momoa, and Javier Bardem. Holy shit! Like, like also, like the effect, like the, the like, effects are nuts. 
Yeah, I swear, like, oh my, like, I, 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 man, when this movie was gonna come out in 2020, I was like, ah, but wait for the, this, the best visual effects race, Dune's gonna take it, and then it didn't, and, well, I mean, well then, you know, it didn't release then, and so I was like, oh, damn. But it can just do it now. Uh, yeah, oh, this year. That's awesome. It looks amazing, like, it does look amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Dune. Yeah, the costume design looks great. The production design, the cinematography. Like, and apparently Warner Brothers has a lot of faith in this because they are the they're sending this to, to Toronto National Toronto International Film Festival, and if uh, reports are like, basically they're wanting to like basically they they they're wanting to really push this for the heavy awards this upcoming. I awards. can't say I blame them. And um. What was it like? They're already planning like spinoffs and whatnot. Uh, I think like, uh, what was it like? Uh, ah, dang, I'm trying to remember. But it's like, uh, ba- basically, Warner Brothers seems to have a lot of confidence. Yeah, no, in, and, and Doom. you know, I can see why. Like, I'm I'm thoroughly impressed by the trailer. Um, the like I said, everything from the cinematography to the music, oh, the yeah. casting choices, oh, is get, awesome. Also, I guess who's doing the music? Who? Hans Zimmer. Hans, of course. Yeah, because here's the thing. Of course. Uh, he's actually, this is actually the reason why he didn't do the music for Tenet, because he was so busy with Dune. With and, Dune. And I will say, uh, they do have a couple of uh, Hans Zimmer tracks from this movie in, uh, in, like, up on YouTube. Like, they have Paul's Dream and and uh, Ripples in the Sand. Sick. And I think one of the, like, like mm-hmm. one of those is, in, it's one of those. Sick. And it sounds great. I am... So excited for Dune! It looks amazing. It's like See it's that really tall guy. What really tall guy? Yeah, keep going. It's all. It's near the end. It's closer to the end. Uh, now where is he? It's a little further back. Uh, keep going. It's a little further back. He like stands up out of a thing. Oh wait, really I think really I know who you think. Yeah, the floating, the bald. I, I don't know what. Bald. I don't. I don't know what he was. I don't know if he was really tall or if he was floating. Oh, there we go. yeah. I think. I think he just. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that. I don't yeah, know what. Either. I like. Maybe I like that's something. Yeah, no, he's tall, dude. Look at how tall. Look at his legs. Holy wait, wait, frick, wait, he's tall. Wait, I don't know if. That, wait, he well, is I tall, dude. I just realized I haven't been. Dude, look at how tall he is. That's a big boy. Wait, I don't see. I don't know if I quite see legs. Wait, let me. Look. Those are legs. Those are definitely knees. He's bending. Wait. I don't know if I see knees. That's a lifting motion. It's yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a lifting motion, but I'm wondering if it's like... it. Yeah, because like, look at the it, cloth. It's like it's more like... Yeah, yeah no, yeah, more, he might not have legs. Yeah, something's lifting... I think something is lifting him up. Yeah, it might like, be mechanical or something. Yeah, may, yeah mechanical, because it's Cause way... Like, you can kind of see like the ripples. Hey, don't, don't move it, but like, look right here. Oh, shit. You see like the ripples? Like, it doesn't... It doesn't, doesn't look, look like legs. It doesn't it look, look like legs. Plus, it also doesn't look like there's nothing in there. I don't know. I think. I think maybe. I like that though. I like him. It, it's 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 definitely adding mystery to it yeah. and whatnot. The bunch of this whole thing's a mystery. Yeah, this is probably one of my most anticipated. Like this, same here. Like you, you know, I'm a sucker for sci-fi. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm more. It's really more so the like the like the fact that Denis Villeneuve is doing it because like, I love Blade Runner 2049. Um, the whole cat like the fact that they got the. All like this huge cast together, and the fact that Warner Brothers seems to have a lot of faith in this, um, I am definitely really excited for uh, for Dune. Same here. Yeah. You know, what I'm also excited for ChristianHanna.com. Absolutely, we are. I am ex- so excited for you. Know what else I'm excited for? Smashing that like and subscribe button. L- scra- smash that like and subscribe button. And we comment have- for the algorithm, please. Yeah, comment for the algorithm, gods. The uh, like uh, we have, yeah. For, in ChristianHanna.com, we have YouTube, Patreon, merch, Twitter, Letterbox, TikTok, subreddit. Oh, like yeah, um, like it's a bunch of crazy stuff. And like I said, we are currently. I'm currently writing uh, the a new a really scene. yeah prehistory in five. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I, like I said, uh, I like. Maybe like uh, like uh uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll probably discuss this a little bit after uh, we finish recording and whatnot but like I said it's gonna be a short form series like five minutes or less where each episode is like is uh, some neat little facts about uh about uh, about a specific prehistoric creature uh, including um 
comedy bits and whatnot. And don't forget about the art thing you're doing with it, too. Oh, yeah. Well, not me. Like, this guy named Harry Wilson yeah. that I'm working with, uh, He he's serving as uh, executive producer along with uh, uh, whatnot, uh, along with providing his art, which is incredibly detailed, and he specifically looks through, like, like you know, scientific journal, like, like scientific articles and whatnot and, and specimens to try to get like as accurate to the creatures as he possibly can. And the first episodes that I like, there are going to be eight episodes per season. Uh, and the first two that we're going to do is Liopluridon and the second one's going to be Diane. Liopluridon, Charlie. Oh yeah, little Liopluridon, Charlie. Like, I don't know why they pronounce it as Liopluridon, but still. Oh, well, you know, because. It's funny. It's, it, that's his name. It's it's a it's a Liopluridon it's named Leo. It's a mag- it's a, it's a magical Liopluridon. His name is Leo. That's a, you know they're calling him by his name. But yeah, um, yeah, like like I said, uh, I'm I'm really excited to try to try something a little bit new out on my cool. Tra- yeah, this is gonna be cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I think that is really all I have to mainly say about this. Uh, yeah. But again, don't forget to like. Subscribe, get, comment, get the merch. Get yeah. the merch. Also share it helps. Anything, everything. Yeah, helps. Get, yeah, do, yeah. Do as much as you can, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say right now. Everyone, uh, bye.